MVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Park National Bank, Dagger Law, the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Standing Stone Bank, Fairfield DD, North Body Shop, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Buckeye Toyota, The Carriage Company, Huddle Tire and Auto, The Fairfield County Commissioner's Office, South Central Power, Sheridan Funeral Home, and Buckeye Lake Marina. From Liberty Union Stadium in Baltimore, IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings Game of the Week. It's the Mid-State League opener tonight between the Amanda Clear Creek Aces and the Liberty Union Lions. Hi again, everybody. I'm Josh Messerly, joined alongside by Marion Royster. And, hey, it's such a nice night, Marion. Why don't we just sit outside, right? <laughs> Gorgeous night. <laughs> it is a beautiful night, and it should be a very good matchup between these two teams. Two and one, both of these teams come into tonight's game. And, really, Marion, if you look at the schedule, kind of a key matchup because in the next couple of weeks, both of these teams play uh, preseason favorite Bloom Carroll. You don't really want to lose too much ground against the Bulldogs. No, you definitely don't want to lose any ground against the Bulldogs or really any of the teams in this division. It's a very competitive division. Uh, you know, both teams jockeying for position, big uh, plans for their 2021 season to try to win this league. Um, so both teams coming in 2-1, it's going to be a pivotal matchup. Uh, and both teams will be ready to play, I'm sure. And a Clear Creek comes in after winning their first two and dropping one last week at home against St. Charles. And the Liberty Union won their last two games after dropping a tough one against Heath. They win 14-6 here at home against Nelsonville, York. Liberty Union scored 14 points in the second quarter to take the lead. You know, this is a, a Liberty Union team that made the playoffs last year. In fact, these two teams met in the playoffs last year, did not meet in the regular season as normal. Um, it was a lopsided affair, 31-7 in favor of Liberty Union. But, you know, we go back to the game you and I actually did two years ago at oh, yeah. Amanda, a barn burner that was, 27-21, a, a winner for Amanda Clear Creek on the final play of the game, uh, Peyton Madison and Jason Miller. It just seems like these two schools always play uh, tough matchups. They do, and that's the mark of a true rivalry. Again, as you said, uh, uh, Liberty Union has done such a good job of really turning their program around, getting it going in the right direction. Uh, just two seasons ago, that se that game that we covered, they, they unfortunately finished that season 0-10, uh, but ended up uh, improving so much better, uh, so much more, excuse me, uh, in 2020 uh, to finish 7-2, and, uh, and again, getting that big win in the playoffs uh, against Amanda Clear Creek, and they're just looking to continue on that trajectory, while Amanda uh, is, is going to look to turn things around, didn't finish very well last year, uh, but um, uh, started off well so far this season pretty good and wanting to continue that positive momentum. Seems like these two teams have a little bit of contrasting styles. Amanda Clear Creek maybe wanting to throw the ball a little more. Nate Hunter comes in with 444 yards and three touchdowns through the air. His big target is Trayvon Miller. Nine catches, 215 yards, and a couple of touchdowns on the year. Yeah, and those are the two guys that really make them go. I've really been surprised with Amanda this year. Uh, just judging from the little bit of footage that we've seen, it looks like they really trust a Hunter uh, to really make uh, a decision, good decisions to make plays in that passing game. And as you mentioned, uh, Tavon Miller, a huge part of that, uh, looks to line up in a lot of different um, areas on the field, but does a lot of damage from that slot position, and they look to get him the ball in a lot of different ways. For Liberty Union, more of a, a ground and pound style team, they're going to lean heavily on uh, Braden Schreier, 32 carries, 158 yards on the year. They're also trying to fill a big void. Uh, Caden Carroll injured in the opener against Heath. Jack Browns had to fill in. Coach Shirey said that uh, you know he's accepted his role as a backup and really has been uh, doing what has been asked of him. Sure, yeah, and, and just to come in off the uh, uh, off the bench as a, a quarterback, when he, I'm sure that Brown didn't come into the season expecting uh, to line up behind center, uh, but that just shows the mark of his character that he was able to step in, accept that role, do what's best for the team, uh, and I, I'm sure we'll talk about uh, Carroll a, a lot more tonight, but. Uh, I was just so impressed with him as a freshman, Josh, when we were uh, not here but at Amanda Clear Creek. He just played amazing, an uh, incredible athlete, and competed the entire game. Got even better last year, was a huge uh, catalyst for what they were able to do to finish 
37 and two. Uh, so again, a huge loss on the offensive end, as you alluded to it. But with Schreier and a lot of other guys, uh, uh, Jacob Denny, which we'll talk a lot about tonight, I'm sure as well. Um, they'll look to pick up uh, wherever they can on the offensive side of the football. Tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They have been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. Liberty Union won the toss, and they will receive. Amanda will be kicking off from the north end, kind of the northwest end, as we look and see the sun kind of setting off to our left, as it will be Jonathan Weaver to tee it up. And this is something you never want to take for granted, Josh, especially with this bright sun, making sure that this kick is secured by the returners. And yeah, the returners have a brutal right in the sun as this one will be taken in the end zone. And that'll be a touchback as Camden Manson was the deep man for the Lions. Well, we have a moment, Marion. How about the keys of the game tonight? Brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Yeah, thanks, Josh. And I think uh, the keys to the game, starting with Liberty Union, First and foremost, they've got to find some playmakers on offense to step in, uh, replace the void that Carroll uh, Phil uh, left, as, as we talked about. Also, finishing drives in the red zone, uh, making sure that they you know, get in, punch it in the end zone when they get close there, and creating turnovers on the defensive end, uh, trying to create more opportunities for the offense. You get a good look at Jack Brown, a senior, and hands off to Shire, and he has nowhere to run as the Aces defense there to clog that one up number of Amanda Clear Creek players in on that stop. Looks like leading the charge is Bobby Purit. And speaking of uh, the keys of the game to, uh, for Amanda, I was just going to mention just sound tackling and pursuits of the football is going to be a huge one tonight on offense. They've really got to make sure that they eliminate turnovers. That was really their downfall against Jonathan Ardle, Ard Alder excuse me, and to start fast on offense. Here's the jet sweep and a little bit of running room breaking a couple of tackles is Camden Manson. He's going to pick up a few there and he'll bring up third down and long. Geiler on the stop for Amanda Clear Creek. When you're talking about a running team, I imagine this is exactly where you want to put them in defensively, third and six or greater. Yeah. Yeah, and especially with a guy uh, at quarterback uh, in Brown that it doesn't have a whole lot of experience in that position, the third and long is really what uh, the Aces are going to look to do. Brown will work out of the shotgun on third and long. Under pressure, looking downfield, heaves it downfield. That ball is going to be out of bounds. And a three and out to start the night for the Amanda defense. Yeah, great job applying pressure there by the Aces. Uh, perfectly timed. Uh, I, I wasn't sure where the blitz came from exactly, but they certainly uh, were sending a, a, a load of defenders at Brown. Again, I think uh, 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 capitalizing on his lack of experience behind center, getting him in third and long, make him speed up his process uh, and make a quick decision, which he was unable to do on that one. And you just saw moments ago Jacob Denny walk off the field, a guy that I know you were very impressed with last time we saw him two years ago. <laughs> I was very impressed. I think he said that he was making a couple of Randy Moss-like catches. <laughs> At 6'6", six, six, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. <laughs> Spinning out of one tackle on the return is Geiler, and he'll get it out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So that's where the Amanda offense will start first and 10. We want to remind you tonight's pregame show is brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals. Carol and Eric Whittington would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events in Lancaster. They're a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio area since 2003. They would love to help plan your next event, weddings, special events, even corporate events, all with a personal touch. They can be reached at 740-689-6991. It's a good starting field position for the Aces on this drive. And it's going to be a quick hitter left side and a big gain. As that catch was hauled in by Cade Young for a pickup of eight. And not wasting much time, kind of a bit of a sugar huddle maybe for the Aces. The, the teams huddle much anymore. <laughs> it seem like it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's kind of a copycat sport, and you see a lot more teams going to a lot of the speed up. Uh, as you said, almost a muddle huddle or sugar huddle, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just getting to the line of scrimmage, again, just the, the whole uh, thought process behind it is just to put pressure on the defense. There's senior signal caller Nate Hunter and some movement ahead. And I'll give the first opportunity tonight to hear from Larry Schreiber, our referee. 
Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. It looked like that might have been a mishandled snap by the center. Wasn't sure. Yeah, it almost looked like most of the team went on one and it was on two or something right, like that. Right, yeah, I think he just may have lost a grip on it as he was snapping. And those things can happen when you run a lot of your offense out of the shotgun or pistol formation as the aces do. So second and five. Hunter drops back, fires and air mails that one, nearly intercepted. That could have been six the other way. I'm sure the Sun maybe played a role on that errant throw. Yeah, I think it was Sam Howell, the senior on that, that made a, a nice play on the ball. Uh, had some nice height to, to try to pull that down, but wasn't able to do it. And Sun most likely a factor on that one, as you alluded to, Josh. Speaking of Sam Howell, Coach Shirey says he's the most improved player from last year. His uh, really hard work in the offseason certainly has paid off and Coaches are taking notice. Third down, Hunter's going to keep it, and he's going to be real close to a first down. Near side official looks like he may be a hair short. Nope, they're going to give it to him. Yeah, and I really like the call there by Coach Dalton. Uh, quarterback draw, uh, just let uh, Nate Hunter uh, pick a lane, uh, figure out where he's going after the first few plays, uh, putting it in the air and uh, keeping this defense on its heels. So first down. The first one of the ball game, recorded by the Aces. Inside of 10 minutes to play in the first, this one hit down the seam, and that is caught by Geiler for a first down. Just able to hold on to that at the 30-yard line. Thought it was going to pop out the last minute. Yeah, pretty catch and even better throw. Uh, just you know, excellent touch shown there by Hunter. Just laid it right out there, right over the outstretched linebackers, and there to the line again. They're going to keep the pressure on the Lions here. Trying to wear out the defense here on first down. Hunter scrambling. Throwing, he's got Geiler again on the sideline. Out of bounds inside, let's say the 12-yard line. Yeah, and Hunter made an incredible play there as well. Uh, just, you know, with the pressure, uh, noticing that, scrambling to his left and able to put it on the back shoulder so Geiler could make the play there. Here's the replay, look at that. Well, this, I'm sorry, this is the play before. That's a Beautiful catch. catch, beautiful catch. First and 10 from the 13. Hunter's going to change it up. It looks like Lions showing blitz. He'll drop back, get rid of it. Catch is made at the 10. And down inside the 5 goes Cade Young. Yeah, and Cade Young, they've got him listed at tight end, but he's lined up at the uh, exposition up top. Uh, pretty much in all these formations uh, since they've started here and taking advantage of uh, the distance he's had by the corner. By size and frame, didn't look like there's a tight end body out there. Right, amongst yeah, the aces. exactly. <laughs> Looks like five receivers. Taking advantage of the speed they have, for sure. Second and one. Hunter's going to call his own number. Gets hit right at the line of scrimmage and shoved sideways right into a pile. Looks like that was Braden Schreier among others in on the stop for Liberty Union. Hunter carried the ball. Schreier leading with 18 tackles, 12 solo on the year. Yeah, he, and you could argue he's been their best player on the offensive and defensive side of the football. Uh, again, just a real hard-nosed, tough kid. We noticed that again when we were uh, covering these two teams a couple years ago. Uh, but you'll see here on the replay, Miller just fighting for those extra yards, kind of a rugby scrum there, and he did pick up a few extra. Third and two. Here's a handoff. And is he in the end zone? Yes, touchdown, Aces. That was Hunter Matheny on the carry. And he gets in for the score. Yep. And, uh, you know, I did notice as they were coming, you know, had three or four different uh, positions come in the game, uh, changing up the formation after running the first five or six plays out of that five wide spread. Uh, again, just uh, keeping uh, the defense on its heels, not ready, ready, really able to predict what's coming, and uh, they were able to get the touchdown on that, that drive there. Jonathan Weaver to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Nate Hunter. Kick is up, and it splits the uprights. And so with 7.36 to go in the first quarter, the score now is Amanda Clear Creek 7, Liberty Union nothing. And really, Marion, how difficult is it for teams to defend the spread as we get another look at the, the score? But, you know, you, you have a little dink and dunk, and then you're going to try and, you know, 
uh, beat them up up the middle. Yeah, it's incredibly diff d difficult. Again, as you know, a lot of the teams in this league and in this area, uh, they don't see this type of offense often uh, with, you know, again, the five wide, especially going with that hurry up so you're not able to really uh, uh, get set in a defensive end. You're just kind of uh, a lot of times just left to do kind of a cloud coverage uh, and just kind of keep everything in front of you. So you saw there uh, the Aces were able to take advantage of that with a lot of short passes, then hit that nice dump over the middle. Um, and then, again, switching at the very end there when they got in short yardage uh, to that power eye formation uh, and able to punch it in. Again, the sun's still going to be a factor on this kickoff as it starts to set over to the left for the Liberty Union returners, kind of right at you. At least one of the returners. It appears to be Austin Eady, who's got the sun right in his face <laughs> at the five-yard line. You can almost use that as a weapon on special teams. You really could. On. Yeah, you really could if you got it up high enough. Uh, and uh, they, they, as well, as long as they're going in this direction uh, and the sun's out, you think they might try to do that, pop it up. And it's going to be Edie who's going to battle the sun. He buffs oh, it, it and it goes into the end zone. Probably the most fortunate thing that could happen for Liberty Union is that goes in for a touchback. Because if that thing uh, stays out, that could be a tricky situation. Yes, it could. It, it very, very well could. And, you know, again, now you've got uh, the Lion offense that has to take the field uh, coming on again with Jack Brown. Uh, but now down seven to nothing uh, in a very important game, in a very important game uh, to this magnitude. And, and again, the pressure's on. I think if you're Coach Dalton, you couldn't have asked for a better start to start fast. Uh, again, put some pressure on this Liberty Union offense, feeling like they have to score, like they have to keep up with you. And maybe they'll be able to take advantage and force some turnovers on their end. Absolutely, and plus when you're coming on the road to start fast, you know, I'm sure relaxes your team. Yep. And there's a tackle in the backfield. Nice tackle there by Cade Young, who come, comes through to blow that play up. The ball carrier, down the Young making it happen on both sides of the ball there uh, after a couple nice catches uh, on the far side of the field, uh, on the offensive side, and then uh, breaking through there on defense, getting a tackle for a loss in the backfield. And yeah, Manson had no chance to outrun him and uh, that's a loss of six on that play. Ends up second and 16 from the 13. Brown gonna roll out to his left, being chased, and he will go down. He sacked back at the nine yard line, and that was Brady Sharp, the senior, coming in to make the play. Yeah, and uh, I thought that he, for a second at least, might have had his tight end Riddle over the middle. Uh, but it looked like Riddle, I don't know if he was uh, waiting for uh, a certain linebacker to clear it up, but didn't seem that he was able to get across the field to really create a good target for Brown on that one. And I think as he was waiting, it just eventually just ran out of time with the pursuit there. And there you have the, snap, the sack, and now you have a, a third and a very long 21 for the Lions. Hard to try and pick that up. Brown's going to work again out of the shotgun. He drops back into his end zone, being chased. He will throw it, and the catch is made by Denny at the 25-yard line, but unfortunately had a long way to go and will be still short. And that's a nice rollout, nice ball, and a fantastic catch by Denny, but again, at third and 21, not a whole lot you can do, and unfortunately the Lions are still going to be forced into a punt. Uh, so again, it's just it's just a matter again of that momentum, uh, and when you start with two negative plays like that back to back, really negative plays, uh, and you're 11 yards in the hole facing third down, it's just not a whole lot you can do. And now you put your defense in a tough position again. Low snap on the punt, and a nice job to get it away by Wolfel, and Geiler on the return up the sidelines got something 40, and he gets. Shoved out of bounds inside the 40. Nice return there by the Aces, and here they are again, fighting into Liberty Union territory. Yeah, excellent starting field position once again. They had it around their own 40 to start the last drive that they put in the end zone. And this time they'll start at the 39 of Liberty Union. Klasky there to force out Geiler on the return. And Hunter brings the offense out once again. Oh, 
throw on first down. Here's Guiley with the catch up the sideline and steps out of bounds. Got to have enough for a first down as he got inside the 30. And again, the quick three-step drop where Hunter is able to get the ball out of his hands very quickly. Unlike on the Liberty Union side, as we saw on offense with the, you know, a deeper drop, rollout passes, allowing the Aces to get pursued. They're not allowing the Lions uh, to get in the backfield and get to the quarterback with these quick routes. Absolutely. You want to start, stop a good pass rush, do that. Hunter's going to launch this one deep for the end zone, but too far. Trying to find Cade Young near the pylon. Yeah, pretty good coverage there by the Lions as well. That's Jack Brown on defense for the Lions. And the Aces, it looks like they're going to continue to stay in this five wide formation. Uh, almost this fast break offense, if you will, uh, just taking it to the Lions. And right now, Liberty Union on their heels here in the first quarter. Pressure coming oh. down the middle at a step. Guyler did, but it was too long for him. They had about three steps on him there, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> he catches that when he hits his head on the goalpost, as That's they say. Right. That's right. Yeah. up third down. Yeah, beautiful route there by Guyler. And again, I, I, I think that there that was one instance where the reunion put a little pressure on him and uh, just uh, Hunter unable to hit that pass accurately. Just a bit long, uh, miss out uh, on the big play, perhaps even potential touchdown for the Aces. Yeah, we've seen Amanda pretty much spread out on every play. Third and 10. Hunter going to go down the middle, and that's an easy touchdown. If he holds on, yes, he did. Touchdown Aces, as that was Cade Young hauling it in, got behind the defense, and basically had to wait on the ball to come down. Yeah, he did, and, and the reason he was able to uh, get behind the defense and be so wide open is they lined up in a little different formation, a bunch formation in the slot there on the right side. Uh, and it looks like there looked like there was a little bit of confusion in the defensive backfield for the Lions. And Young just came behind one of the other uh, breaking receivers, uh, ran a deep post, and again was just wide open to wait on that football and catch a touchdown. On to attempt the extra points, Jonathan Weaver. There you see him. Hunter will hold. And that one is up and good. So with 5.27 remaining in the first, 14 nothing, all aces. Yep. Look at the score. As you look at the replay here again, you, you saw at the beginning of that, you know, the receivers bunched up and uh, 24 K Young just ran right off of, of the cutting uh, receiver in front of him. Just got open, keeps his hands, uh, gets his hands up high and holds onto the football all the way to the ground. Touchdown, Amanda Clear Creek. Well, kind of a you know, different uh, mindsets on both sides right now. If you're Amanda Clear Creek, you couldn't be more pleased with the way this game has started. But if you're Liberty Union, you be a little bit shell-shocked the way this has started. Yeah, absolutely shell-shocked. But the one thing you can't do is panic, Josh. Uh, I think uh, you, you don't want to get out of your game plan. Again, a lot of football still left to play. There's only uh, f five minutes and 27 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, so there's really no reason. If you can put a couple defensive stops together, there's really no reason to get out of your offensive game plan. Keep what you're doing. Uh, trust Brown. Uh, get a, give a heavy dose of Brandon Shire. And I, I think, you know, again, you make some stops on defense, and you can get back in this game very, very easily. Yeah, that's been the one thing for Liberty Union. They just have not been able to get that ground game going, and that's so crucial for them. Yeah, and again, negative plays early in the downs will do that to you when you just can't get a rhythm, especially in a running game. And credit the Amanda Clear Creek front seven. They have just not given any uh, a ground to uh, that running game for the Lions uh, thus far. So far, it's been the seniors of Amanda Clear Creek doing the job, and Coach uh, Dalton really praised his senior leadership. They got 16 seniors, and one of the quotes he had, they, we will go as far as they will take us. And on the return is Manson. Manson gets stood up in the middle of the field and driven back from the 25-yard line. Certainly momentum right now with the Aces. And what the Liberty Union comes out with here. Yep, yep, we'll see what they do. Again, they've got to have that poise. You talked about a lot of seniors for Amanda Clear Creek, a lot of uh, seniors for Liberty Union as well, 10 seniors uh, on this team. So, you know, they've got to reach down uh, and draw on the experiences that they had because a lot of these uh, players played as freshmen and sophomores. Uh, so they've got a lot of game experience. They've been in a lot of different situations, especially, unfortunately, going 0-10 uh, as freshmen. Um, so they got to know that they're still able to get back in this game and just keep what they're doing. 
like some early movement, but it doesn't matter as it gets stopped, snuffed out. Schreier had nowhere to run. Right now, this Amanda defense just swarming. Yeah, it's almost like they're in their huddle, you know. Uh, they're, they're making plays in the backfield. It seems like the, you see just a, a swarm of white jerseys. It seems like they know exactly when to apply pressure early in the downs, and then later in the downs, they, you know, they're keeping folks uh, uh, back in the defensive backfield but still able to get pressure with the people that they're sending. Uh, really nothing for Liberty Union to do thus far. Brown looks left on second down, finds Denny. Stiff arms a man, and he's going to be close to a first down. And that's a guy that if they can get the ball in his hands can make a difference for Liberty Union. Yeah, yeah, and that's the right call there. Again, we talked about the keys to the game early, just finding guys to make plays on offense uh, uh, to make up for the loss of uh, Kate and Carroll uh, that they've had. And Denny is certainly a, a, a key suspect that could be able to do that. Again, 6'6", has a lot of good speed. Uh, you see him go up there high, makes the catch, and able to make a stiff arm there, make a play. And no gain there on the carry. Myers carries the ball. That's Side Troy Myers two. on the carry. And on the stop was Hunter Matheny, who's made an impact so far tonight. Yeah, and uh, I don't mean to state the obvious here, but it's going to be a long night for the Lions if they're not able to get anything going in the running game. Again, Jack Brown, he's made some plays this year. He's certainly done the job, done with what he's asked to do, as we've said. But uh, to, to put the game on his shoulders with, again, not, not a lot of experience lining up the quarterback position, that's asking a lot. So they've got to get this running game going. Got a couple Brown. folks in motion here. Second and 12. Brown looking left, being chased, and he's just going to throw this one into the Amanda Clear Creek bench. That's probably a wise decision there. Yeah, uh, I was actually surprised that they didn't call timeout because it looked like you had a couple receivers that were confused about what the play call was uh, or who was supposed to be in the, in the motion on that play. Uh, so you end up again, unfortunately, just burning it down and you're facing another third and long uh, for the Lions, which again is not where they want to be. It's kind of interesting. You and know, I kind of jokingly talked about this before the game started, but you know, it's still early in the season, but we're in week four, yeah. you know. <laughs> Doesn't feel it, like it. It's getting uh, late early, I guess you would say. <laughs> Brown drops back, throws deep down the left side. He's got Denny, but he overshot him. Jacob Denny got behind the defenders, but the ball was just a little bit too far out in front of him. Yeah, and again, I think Denny was a little confused with where Brown was on that play. Uh, so he had, had, was even with the defender when he saw Brown uh, scrambling towards his, uh, towards his direction, started to, to speed up and try to get by the defender. But I think at that point it was too late for him to catch up with the football, even with the speed that he has. Give another look, a great camera shot from Tom Russo coming right at you. But there you really see the size of Denny. He is a big kid. Uh, so I think that they are going to want to try to continue to get him the football in any way that they can. And let this one go is Wolfel. Hit and check up at the 30-yard line where it's touched up. And that's where Amanda Clearcreek will take over first and 10. Let's take a look at the schedule. We kind of talked about it's already week four of the schedule. But uh, you know, Liberty Union's had a pretty good uh, start to the season, you know, losing the first game against a tough Heath team. Uh, you know that uh, school a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> then uh, getting <laughs> Off a, to a great start. <laughs> yeah, getting a good uh, win against Lakewood and then a good win against Nelsonville, York. But you see after this, back-to-back -back on the road, Taze Valley. We will uh, be there against Bloom Carroll on September 24th. And then the rest of the Mid-State League schedule. That's not necessarily easy. Uh, that's couple weeks. pretty close to what you would call Motorers Row there, right. Josh. I mean, that is a tough schedule. It's just a tough league. I mean, there are no off weeks, uh, especially early in the season for the Lions. And on first down, Hunter had nowhere to go with the football, and the rush finally got to him. And if you're Liberty Union, that's what you want to see. I mean, for the first time, they've really – uh, been able to uh, stop the momentum of Amanda Clear Creek and put them in a second and long. First negative play I think that we've seen uh, for uh, the Aces, and it looks like uh, Liberty Union is going to take a timeout here. Yep, our timeouts tonight are sponsored by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. You can learn more at carriagecompany.com. 
Scott.com. I also want to mention our, mention our first half scoreboard sponsor tonight is Buckeye Toyota. Buckeye Toyota would like to wish all the local athletes best of luck this season. Buckeye Toyota is your hometown dealer that's here to help. Visit us online at mybuckeyetoyota.com. So we took a look at the Liberty Union schedule. How about the Amanda Clear Creek schedule? And, you know, it, it's just a different order, really, if you look yeah, at it, yeah. other than their, their non-league schedule. But had a really great win to open the year against Jonathan Alder. Uh, and then uh, after that, they, they got a good win against Uniotos. We get another look at Liberty Union as well. But, I mean, both of these teams, there's Amanda Clear Creek. Yeah, a good win against the Jonathan Alder team that surprisingly is yes. 0-3. Who yes. would have saw that? Yes, I would have. Absolutely. Tough loss last week at home against St. Charles, but we'll be at Amanda next week as they host Bloom Carroll. And after that, you got Circleville and the rest of the league, and again, Taze Valley on the road. So both of these two teams have a, a lot ahead of them, and it's going to be difficult. Right, right. And even, you know, the St. Charles game, you know, it felt like they um, could have won that game. It was just, again, a lot of – Enforced, unforced errors on their part. And there's a pass out into the flat and quickly taken down as Tavon Miller. And that's the first time we call his name tonight, Josh, but it sure won't be the last. Uh, right. Miller's made a lot of plays uh, for this team thus far and, and someone they look to get involved in the game. Uh, that slot position is so important to what they do. Again, working over the middle, uh, able to put pressure on those linebackers, and then as those linebackers are kind of in a – Unsure position, Miller taking advantage with his legs. And there's going to be a free five yards for the Aces as the Lions get into the neutral zone. Dead ball foul. Encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. The officials probably like the obvious call. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty easy. He came, he came across and knocked him down. Yep. And that's a penalty. No question there. <laughs> And a great use of caves there, again, because now instead of the, the third and long, you've got third and short, third and five, third and manageable, as they say, and um, uh, just a you know nice job by Amanda Clear Creek. Good use of cadence. Well, Coach Dalton said this team had a very good week of practice, and it shows, and in there to make the sack. A big play made defensively by Caleb Riddle. Riddle, a 6'4", 190-pound senior defensive end. Yeah, yeah, huge plays by huge play by Riddle there. Uh, couldn't come at a better time again to finally uh, stop this Amanda Clear Creek offense, which really had had any kind of, of a resistance thus far in the game, forcing them into their first punt. And as we look at the replay there, uh, good pressure there by a few uh, aces. Uh, looks there, look number 52 also in on the mix, Jacob McLean. Just a great job putting pressure and getting a sack there. That's the first time we've seen tonight pressure applied by the LU defense. That's right. It's a high punt that will be taken at the 29 by Denny, and he goes down right away as Amanda's special teams unit does the job to keep Jacob Denny from getting loose. Yeah. And just a side note, I finally see what Jared and Shu were talking about with those orange ball markers. Every time they fly out, it looks like a penalty. I know Every it. single time. I know <laughs> it. I think, oh, flag on the play. What could that be? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it's, what was wrong with blue or white? I yeah, know. right. Yeah, I guess the white wasn't uh, distinguishable enough. So here we are uh, trying to figure out if it's a penalty or just a ball mark. Especially if the uh, early part of the game when the sun has yes. that low angle yeah. hits it, it looks yellow. So true. So true. First and 10 at the 30. Brown's going to keep it, and he's not going to get much. Give him maybe a yard on that carry as Amanda was ready for that quarterback draw. Yeah, and they've been ready for anything that's come on the ground tonight from the Lion offense. I mean, it's just that offensive line, unfortunately, for the Lions not getting any sort of push. They are just you know, losing the battle at the line of scrimmage uh, tonight, flat out. And uh, they, they, they've got to find a way to get that rectified if it's, you know, trying to take advantage of some short passes, something like that, just something uh, to slow down uh, this, you know, immense pursuit from the Aces. Not to belabor the point, but you wonder if the sun's starting to set, if Brown can now see downfield. He saw him earlier overthrow some guys. Yeah. That was oh. in and out of the hands of Denny. Could have been picked off. But you wonder early on, you know, he overthrew his receiver. Maybe he couldn't judge it because he had the sun in his face. That's a very good point, Josh. Yeah, that, that sun, it, it's, it doesn't just affect the returners. We should have made that point. Uh, it can affect the quarterback. 
uh, you know, when that, that sun's coming down a certain angle and you're looking straight into it to see your receivers, particularly downfield, where they like to take a lot of, uh, of advantage with Denny's speed and size, uh, makes it very, very difficult to do. Uh, so we'll see what happens here for the remainder of the game with the sun down. Third and long for the Lions. Brown under pressure again. Denny will make the catch on the sideline. Tap, tap out of bounds at the 40. But he's still going to be about a yard short, it looks like. And this is one instance where they very seriously have to consider going for it. I know you're on the wrong side of the 50 for Liberty Union, but this offense really hasn't been able to generate anything thus far uh, in this game. You finally got some momentum going here. You stopped Amanda Clearcrick for the first time, and it looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field and go yeah, ahead and go for it. Yeah, they're going to say he did get the first down, as you see nice oh, I'm sorry. work on the sideline. Yeah. Fantastic footwork there by Denny. And they did give him the first down. I stand corrected. That one's thrown over the middle. Denny's got it. He's got some running room into Aces territory and another first down for Jacob Denny. And we talked about it. That's a guy that can uh, change the uh, momentum for Liberty Union. And they're finding Jacob Denny on a couple of pass plays. Yeah, and they're finding different ways, uh, different routes to get him the ball on. Again, it's not that, you know, he just can line up at the X position and run slants and goes. You know, that time he ran a, a shallow cross over the middle, just sat in the little uh, void vacated by the linebackers. Uh, Brown was able to get him the football and just let him run and make a play. Inside of a minute to play in the first quarter. Lions on the move for the first time tonight. Brown, a quick hitter to Denny. He gets it and is immediately forced out of bounds as Hunter playing defense forces him out. And Brown saying, my bad on that one. I think he wanted to get Denny the ball in a place where he could uh, make some, some moves with it. But here you go, you see Denny in the open field. Nice stutter step, good strength there. Stiff arming the defender there and getting at least three or four extra yards. He's just a great athlete. Again, we just remarked he, he was so tall and, and quite a bit thinner a couple years ago when we saw him, uh, but still was just, you know, made such an impact on the game, and he's just continued to get better as his career has gone on. 6'6", 185, and a senior. Brown on the keeper. Squirts free, but won't get much further as there to clean it up for Amanda Clear Creek is Bobby Purat. Yeah, again, just, you know, that pursuit by the Aces, and we talked about that in the pregame. It was such uh, a, a key to the game. I think uh, uh, earlier in the season, uh, they weren't really doing as good of a job, particularly against Jonathan Alder, of really just pursuing the ball, having two, three, four guys bringing down the defender. Tonight, they've been fantastic at it. Hasn't given the Lions, hasn't given the Lions any kind of running room. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter with the score, Amanda Clear Creek 14, Liberty Union nothing. Well, Maron, it's kind of eerily similar to the way the game started two years ago that you and I did, <laughs> where Amanda Clear Creek jumped out into a big lead. Liberty Union had a wild comeback. And then the, the crazy play that ended that game two years ago. <laughs> Yes, uh, crazy, cra crazy play. One of the, the craziest endings, can't use that word enough, that I'd ever been a part of. And I'm talking high school, college, professional football that I've watched, just nothing that I'd ever seen before uh, with the sequence there. With the, well, I'll, I'll let you set it up. Yeah, we'll, You're much we'll, better than I. <laughs> we'll, we'll get a, ch a chance to look at that here maybe a little bit later. But, uh, yeah, just the – just a crazy game. And it was a Friday the 13th, and I think we said that it anything was, yes. crazy will happen on Friday the yeah, 13th. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, just, <laughs> just an incredible play. But, you know, but it, it was just a, a you know. A, here we go. Yeah, here we go with the flashback. Yeah, the yeah. flashback from two years ago as uh, Liberty Union and Amanda Clear Creek. Friday the 13th. Yeah, five seconds to go here. Uh, and forgive me, I'm, I'm a little rusty. I, I cannot remember the quarterback. Peyton Madison. Peyton Madison, thank you, Josh. Just rolling out, trying to make a play at the end of the game. 21-21. We thought they were going to go to overtime, yeah, and here you have the it. catch. Oh, Jace my Jace Miller goodness. breaks free and takes it to the house. Yes. And Just that was that. One of the craziest endings. Amazing sequence of events leading up to it as well. Back to live action and in trouble was Brown. He scrambles and gets out of bounds inside the 40. So they're going to say he stepped out just prior to the 40-yard line, so it's still going to be fourth down. And just going... 
Yeah, yeah you can see the fans ago, who like, just could not yeah. believe I what had happened. I couldn't believe it. I don't think any could. of us could. I think we were probably horse at the end of that night. I know yeah. I was just from <laughs> just our, our just sheer shock and and uh, just amazement at what had just happened. But that's why high school sports are so great. Absolutely. You know, things like that happen. You see kids that just continue to, you know, just fight all the – and you see they, they're so excited just to win that game. Punt will roll dead just outside the 10-yard line where it is touched up by Liberty Union's Jack Brown. And rather, that was a Sam Howe who touched that one up, and that's where Amanda will start first and 10 here early in the second quarter. Beautiful night here at Liberty Union Stadium. Glad you've joined us here in IVP Sports. Josh Messerly alongside Marion Royster. We affectionately call ourselves the BTs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. The, we give you an A effort. Yeah, yeah. We are the B team sitting in for <laughs> Jared, Jared and Jared. Tim tonight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but happy to be here. And, uh, you know, any, anytime you can be out here on a night like tonight, watch some high school football and uh, uh, just tell you good folks what, what we see going on in the field. Uh, just, just excellent opportunity. Happy to be here. So first and 10 from the 11 for the Aces. A little bit of a high snap. Hunter weaving through the defense, breaks a tackle, and will drag a man out to about the 18-yard line. Nice stick there by Brandon Shire. Just really put a a helmet there on Miller as he came through, but not until Miller got six yards. And a second and four uh, here. It sets up very nicely for the Aces. You know, exchanging emails with both coaches this week, they, they were really both excited about the fact that they've gotten some players back, whether it be injury or more likely contract tracing due to COVID protocol. There's another first down for the Aces as that catch is made on the sideline by Brady Sharp, and the Aces moving the chains once more. Yep, very nice, uh, precise route ran there by Sharp. Sharp route, uh, no pun, yeah. pun intended. Uh, nice job there by him. But, yeah, you know, COVID continues to just be, you know, just kind of the wild card for all of these right. teams. Uh, it was just such a factor. And last year, you know, it was just you know, things happening, you know, here that the teams couldn't predict. You just have to do your best. Right, and, and you have to kind of make adjustments on the fly, and I think by now we're all kind of used to that. Absolutely. But the fact that uh, players being back for both teams, most of the full squads for both. Again, we mentioned uh, the injury to Caden Carroll week one. Not expected that he'll return the rest of the year, so uh, that's certainly a big blow to Liberty Union. Yeah, yeah, and that, that hurts. Again, you know, we talked in the pregame just – how, how strong of a player he was, uh, you know, just uh, his offense, what he was able to do, and just so many things for the, for the uh, lines there. Here's Miller on the catch out in the flats. He takes it across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and a decent pickup there. Fryer there, met him, and a little slow to get up. They're going with tempo here again for the Aces, trying to get back into that. Third and six. Ace is trying to slow it down a little bit. Play clock inside of 10. Blitz coming, and Hunter's going to get wrapped up and thrown down. And in there for the sack was Jacob McQueen. Nice job there by McLean. Again, uh, almost it looked like a jailbreak there as uh, uh, a few of the lines were able to get a, a jump on the snap, it seemed like. Uh, anticipated it very well, got off the line of scrimmage. Uh, it, it just beat the offensive linemen uh, to get to Miller and uh, get him down in the backfield. Uh, set up another fourth down as we look here at the replay again. He's almost in the backfield almost immediately as he gets the snap. Not a whole lot Miller could do on that one. Uh, just you know, try to not create a turnover. Uh, and punt and uh, hold on to your 14 point lead. Came into the night, McLean did with two sacks. Adds another one to the total. And let this one fly is Jonathan Weaver. And Denny touches it, picks it up, and won't get much further than the 26 yard line. And that is a flag. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> a late hit. That will give Liberty Union some better field position, most likely. We'll get the call from Larry Schreiber. Illegal block in the back, number 26, black. It's a 10-yard penalty to be first down. 
Said it goes against Liberty Union, so that will back them up. Yeah, and again for the Lions, unfortunately, it's ne another negative play. Uh, you know, starting in, in even deeper territory uh, in, in your own uh, wrong side of the, of the 50. But uh, again, it's just something they, they've just got to continue uh, to, to keep a positive First attitude. Uh, and again, they, it seems like they, they weathered the early storm uh, put on by the Aces, that really early onslaught, those two quick touchdowns. Uh, so they, they've got it, you know, still first and ten here, so it's, you know, something they can get themselves out of with a nice drive here. And a promising drive before it got bogged down in Aces territory. Here's a hitter on the left side, quick hitter, and a nice pickup made by Camden Manson. Manson, a 5'11", 170-pound junior. Yeah, nice use of the bubble screen there. And, and Manson, again, also one of their, their better athletes. Uh, so, you know, again, not to, as you say, belabor the point, but uh, talking about it, it's very imperative that they have, an, uh, if not one guy, a number of guys uh, that step up and make big plays, impact plays on offense uh, to, to try to get chunk yardage plays uh, for the Lions, and Manson certainly a player that can do that. Lions spreading it out here on second and five. Manson again, bust free, 40, midfield and out of bounds. Finally brought down by Trent Hedges, but not before the Lions pick up another first down. Yeah, incredible burst there by Manson. Again, the same play call just to the other side of the field, giving him the wide side on that bubble screen there. Uh, just get him the ball as quick as you can and, and, and uh, let him run. Uh, really two parts of this as we see the replay. Here he catches it. He's got great blocking on the outside by the, the two receivers there. And then he makes a couple uh, miss, uh, defenders miss as well uh, to get some additional yardage, get it out to the 50 and a first down. First to 10 from the 49 and finally some running room for the Lions on the carry. That was Austin Eady. Eady carried the ball. Edie was another name that we called quite a bit a couple years ago. Made some really great plays for the Lions. Again, just speaks to you know uh, the suffering that they did through that 0 and 10 season. But they got such good experience. So many of these players again have been in situations where they've been down. They continue to fight and to have that confidence that they can come back and win this game. Well, they got experience. It may not have been fun experience, but they got experience. This one launched deep downfield, but not on the same page. Uh, is quarterback Jack Brown and Jacob Denny. Yeah, and they might have missed on that opportunity. You could see them setting it up. That, again, was kind of a fake bubble screen. Uh, they ran Manson out in this, the same um, uh, action as they had before, but this time uh, they had Denny running long. Uh, but it looked like just a little confusion and a, a misplacement of the ball there, uh, so they weren't able to take uh, advantage of that call. It's like a really big third down here in the first half with eight and a half to go. High snap. And it's going to be a carry by Edie again, and he's going to be dropped just shy of the first down marker, and it looks like Lions no hesitation to go for this one. Yeah, and that's a gold star by Brown on that one. I mean, to, to bring that snap down, we're going to see it on the replay here. Incredibly high snap. He one-hands it, and is just able to just kind of stick it in the chest of the running back Edie there. More uh, than that ends in disaster. Yep. Edie again on fourth down. He's got the first down. Inside the 40, as he was brought down by Cade Young, and a big first down for the Lions as the fans get into it here at Liberty Union Stadium. Yeah, it's some tough running there by Edie. Again, coming off the play that they just had that could have ended in disaster, uh, but they were able to get some positive yards to set up a fourth and short. Edie fights hard to get that first down, and now, you know, they're on again. You know, the 39-yard uh, line going in on the Aces territory, a chance to finally put some points on the board. Brown, a bubble screen again. And this one going to be near another first down. And that one catch was made by Caden Quartz, a 5'7", 145-pound junior. Yeah, nice play by Quartz there. We'll watch the replay. Hard running at the end as well. Uh, Amanda Clear Creek, you might sense just a tad that that defense is maybe starting to get a bit fatigued um, as uh, for once the Lions are putting pressure on them. Here's a handoff left side. There's nowhere to run. Ball comes free at the end, but the officials say that he was down. That was Barrett Young on the carry, who comes up limping off the field. Loose ball recovered by Riddle. Not what you want to see. It looks no. like he's in a lot of pain there.
Still a third and short, though, uh, for the Lions. Uh, certainly a manageable down here, and again, something that they've really got to convert in order to get some points on the board and stay in this ball game. Third and three. Brown, another bubble screen. It's going to be enough for a first down. That's on the ground, Ball too. came loose. I think he got it back. He did. That was Manson again. The Lions are here But I think he still picked up the first down. Uh, and it is a first down for the Lions. And they've gone to the well uh, more than a few times here on this drive. And I think uh, on, on that drive, or on that play, excuse me, the Aces were ready for it. They uh, had a nice pursuit to the ball and put a, a nice wallop uh, on Manson at the end of that, caused a fumble, but uh, fortunately for the Lions, they were able to recover it. It was like Liberty Union might be setting up something else later with that play. Dreyer grinding for some hard yards. Yeah, nice to see Liberty Union try to get Trier involved there on a nice uh, uh, delay there, uh, draw up the middle. He, he just runs so hard, you know, it, it, uh, we'll look at the replay here. Uh, uh, so a nice job by the offensive line as well. Just a little bit of a crease. Uh, hit just a couple yards past the line of scrimmage, but falls forward for another three or four. That's the mark of a great back. And off again. And not much running room on that carry for Austin Eady. Or rather, that was Schreier again, 32. Schreier carried the ball. And right on the stop the for Amanda Clear Creek was four. Roland. Yeah, and that wasn't it. Uh, not before a couple aces uh, in the backfield that were able to stifle Schreier uh, before he was able to get going. And just that uh, that that uh, friction that he received in the backfield allowed him, you know, what didn't allow him to get to the line as quickly. Kind of like a diesel truck's got to get going a little bit. Uh, that one's thrown low, and Manson has to go down to get it and loses a couple on that play. And it'll bring up fourth down as we... Hit the five minute mark here until halftime. A 14 nothing lead for Amanda Clear Creek. And it looks like Liberty Union's gonna send the field goal unit out. Yep, and one thing we didn't uh, talk about, uh, the kicking game for the Lions. Uh, they, they've got confidence in their kicker. Uh, to Storm Wolf, uh, a six foot junior, uh, who's you know made some field goals, made, you know been uh, assured his extra points here. So. Looks like they're going to uh, trot him out there and uh, give him a shot to, to make this field goal, put some points on the board. And the Picarillo is the holder, and Liberty Union, maybe not on the same page, decides to take a timeout, which is sponsored tonight, as always, by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Learn more at carriagecompany.com. And since we got about four and a half minutes left until halftime, we'll remind you that the Halftime Band Show we brought to you by the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Crematorium Monuments, family owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. Frankie Smith Funeral Home, respect for, for tradition, regard for change. And by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Personal or business banking, whatever you need. We take it seriously because we know you do too. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Number FDIC, equal housing lender. So after the timeout, Liberty Union is going to bring the offense back on the field. You like this call? I do like this call. I, again, I'm not exactly sure of the kicker's range, but at this, at, at this point in the game, why not just give your offense another shot? Brown's going to roll right. He's going to throw it up for Denny. He makes the catch at the 15-yard line. And that's going to be enough for a first down. Yep, and again, I think that's the right call. You know, it's easy to say that after the fact, but I think it was the right thing to do. Uh, you know, that that's a risky field goal at this level. Um, and, you know, it, it, scoring a touchdown uh, would be the most important thing for this Liberty Union team at this point in time. Just as you see here on the replay, just a nice loft set up there for Denny. And Denny's still 6'6". <laughs> so throw it up there high, let him make a play. Edie on the cutback, still churning his legs down to the 10-yard line. And, you know, to your point, Mario, it kind of feels like field goals aren't going to win this game. You really need to punch it in the end zone. The teams that 
are settling for field goals are going to be struggling tonight. Right, right, exactly. And especially when it's a, a field goal that's not a sure thing. Again, because if you miss it, you know, you give a man to clear feet the ball with about four minutes to go in the half uh, with the ball in about the 38 to 40 yard line. Uh, so the, the chance for them to go in, and if they score a touchdown and go up 21 to nothing before halftime, then you're really in trouble. Um, so, you know, good call there. They were able to convert. Denny made a great play. Edie had a nice run on first down. Now you've got second and five. Schreier straight ahead. Spin move to the five. Inside the five, and he's going to have first and goal to go. Something that Coach Shirey said that they have been working on is getting in the end zone in the red zone. That's been an area of concern, and looks like they've uh, made some improvements when you can run right ahead like that. Yeah, yeah. Schreier, again, he, no nonsense type of back. You just get him the ball, let him get up ahead of steam, and hit the, hit the, uh, hit the hole with a full head of steam there. Breaking tackles. Here he is again. He gets another carry and will not get back beyond the line of scrimmage. Amanda's waiting for him on that carry. Got three white jerseys there to meet him. Trent Hedges among them. Yeah, and Liberty Union, that's, it seems like that's where they've had their most trouble is getting push on the inside and, you know, and, and the A gap and the B gap there. Um, you know, if they were able to run something off tackle or maybe on the perimeter, uh, you know, Shire has really good speed. Edie looks like he does as well. Uh, that might be something that makes a little bit more sense, maybe even perhaps a quarterback draw on something like this as opposed to just slamming into, you know, a wall, a brick wall defenders of the Aces. It's going to be a wildcat, and Austin Eady's going to take it in for a touchdown. That thing parted, and he just walked in virtually untouched. Yep, and that's, again, as, we, as you, you, you said, Josh, there, the direct snap. Uh, get an extra blocker in there. Uh, uh, run it just through the C-gap uh, for uh, Schreier, and he knows exactly what to do with it. Uh, just a, Again, just a hard-nosed runner. Uh, jams it up in there, but uh, had quite a bit of room. Good push there by the Liberty Union offensive line. And that might have, they may have found something there as that kick is up and good by Wolfel. We'll get another look at the score. Yep, and again, Shire, just a direct snap. Don't mess around. You've got two blockers uh, leading the charge instead of just one. And again, that time it looked like the Liberty Union offensive line very determined, got a nice push there. They, they wanted to get in the end zone. You talked about finishing drives, finishing when you get in the red zone. They were determined to get in on that play. Uh, keep this game close, 14 to seven, with a couple minutes left in the second half, in the second quarter. It's the fans back in the ball game, more importantly for Liberty Union, trying to take advantage of the home field advantage. Yeah. It, 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 not just a home field event. They've got a really nice crowd with it being homecoming yep. tonight. So you want to keep them in the game, uh, keep them excited, and have that fan momentum behind you. Yeah, nice crowd on hand for both schools. We kind of figured two and one two versus two and one that you kind of expected a good turnout. Weather fantastic as well. So all those play a role. And again, homecoming, and we'll. Mentioned the homecoming uh, king and queen here in a little bit. Miller and Covell back deep for the Aces as Wolfel has it teed up. This will be Covell trying to find some room up the sideline, tiptoeing and forced out of bounds around the 33 yard line. So a pretty decent return for Amanda. Yeah, the return game for the Aces has been really strong tonight. We had a couple of nice pump returns that time on the kickoff return. Uh, you know, when you're able to get a, a, a nice uh, start to your drive on something like this, if you look at the replay, Govell just does a nice job following his blockers and then bouncing it to the outside just right at the right time. Uh, gets an additional 10 or so yards um, and start uh, just short of the 30 yard line for the Aces offense. Aces have all three timeouts as they start the two-minute drill. Hunter going to run a little option and some running room, but not a whole lot. Nice look, Carrot. Go ahead. I was going to say nice looking cut back there by Matheny, yep. but even better pursuit by the Lions. Matheny will get three on the carry. I haven't seen a whole lot of option out of the Aces so far. No, they've stuck with pretty much that short passing game most of the time, but uh, I think we'll see a lot of different looks uh, from the Aces, maybe some option and also some uh, 
uh, quarterback power as well. Working out of a pistol. It'll be Matheny trying to cut it back, and Liberty Union's defense is ready for that. Dreyer in there, also Sam Howe. And Schreier uh, starting to take over a little bit on offense and defense. Here's another look at that last one. Yep, again, really nowhere for Matheny to go on that one. Tackled by a host of Lions in the backfield. Great pursuit again. Caleb Riddle also in on the stop. Brings up third and long for Amanda Clear Creek. As we're inside of a minute to go. I'm surprised the Aces maybe didn't uh, go with more up-tempo. And that one's in and out of the hands of Brady Sharp, who could not haul it in. Would have had a first down or real close to it if he did. Yep, and Sharp ran the same route that he ran before when he made that uh, really nice catch and was able to get a first down. Was open on that one again, just couldn't haul it in. Uh, of course, it's going to one that he's going to want to have back, but uh, uh, great stop here by... Uh, the Lions, uh, depending on how the punt turns out here, uh, they do have one timeout left. Might see if they might get in uh, striking distance to kick another field goal. Offense looks like it's out on the field. Oh, wow. Unless they're going to drop back Hunter to punt this one. And, and he is. will. A little quick kick. No one back deep for the Lions. And that one will hit at the 35 and be touched up there as Tavon Miller touches it up with 39 seconds to go until halftime. Uh, and that can be a risky play uh, because again, you don't have the, the normal protection that you would, and if anything goes wrong, it could very easily get blocked. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you, what you do is you eliminate the threat of, uh, of Jacob Denny uh, potentially making a big play, uh, which could you know, really be a backbreaker going into the half. So 39 seconds to go, only one timeout remaining for the Lions. We'll see what they decide to do. Brown's going to move to his right, launch downfield, and throw it too wide for his intended receiver. That was Camden Manson. He's had a nice first half so far. Yeah. That was a nice route by Manson. Just unfortunately, Brown took him out of bounds. But uh, tough to do when you're <laughs> on a dead run like that. And again, don't have a lot of experience. Maybe uh, not, again, just not at the quarterback position, but throwing on the run uh, against a rush like we've seen from the Aces tonight. Second and 10. Under pressure again, Brown just gets rid of this one, throws it in the direction of Denny, and he did come wow. down with it. That was almost a throwaway, it kind of appeared. But I thought he was throwing it yeah. away, and I thought uh, Denny was two yards out of bounds. So I, <laughs> maybe I need to have my eyes checked. That was just an amazing play on both ends. I think it was just more amazing play. Yeah, huh? yeah, wow. And more importantly for the Lions, Denny gets out of bounds and gets the first down, stopping the clock with 28 seconds to go. Helps to be 6-6, Josh. It does. Brown going to keep it, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage as pressure applied by Bobby Purat and Robert Rowland, who Coach Steve Dalton raved about as being one of the most improved players from last year. In fact, Rowland was injured all of last year but really uh, put in the work during the offseason and put himself in a position to have success. And the Lions burn their final timeout with 22 seconds remaining. Nothing else trying to work into field goal range. Yeah, and Robert Rowland, those are just, those are players and individuals that you can build a program on. And uh, Coach Dalton has been so fortunate uh, to have a lot of players like that come through his program uh, over the years. Uh, and Roland's just, just another uh, prime example of that. Uh, when you have guys like that that can lead and set an example uh, and, and just work so hard in the offseason, uh, where these games like this are really won and lost. Uh, you know, the preparation that, that, you know, when you have players that take it so seriously and are so dedicated, it just makes a humongous effort, or humongous difference, excuse me. Both of these programs really are blue-collar programs. Screen pass, and that uh, one's in and out of the hands of Jacob Denny. 
Might have had something had he been able to hold that one in. I think he definitely had something. That was the perfect play call. The, line, the uh, offensive line did a fantastic job of allowing the pursuit to come in, and he had a convoy of linemen running down the field to block on that wide receiver screen, that rocket screen, and unfortunately just off the hands uh, for the Lions. They'll bring up third and 10 with 19 seconds to go. And if you're Liberty Union, if nothing else, you got to get beyond the sticks, I would imagine, just to stop the clock. Yeah, uh, with 19 seconds to go here, it's just something that you don't want to have anything, you know, bad happen, a turnover, something like that, uh, but still try to make a play. Brown will toss it up for Denny, and the catch is made at the 26-yard line. We Reminds me of two seasons ago, those two just played 500. Actually, yeah. Caden Carroll and Jacob Denny just played 500, and that yeah. is another example. Yeah, uh, he's still 6'6". I mean, mm -hmm. we keep, I keep checking the the, the uh, scores here to look, but uh, he hasn't shrunk at all when he got a guy that tall. Throw it up and let him make a play. Clock moving, oh, a fumbled a snap, and I'm not sure he spiked it. Clock moving down to two seconds yeah. as the officials discuss it, and that's going to take it to halftime. It looked like it was a bobbled snap yes. that he didn't get a chance because he didn't catch it cleanly right. and not able to, to spike it. Right, unfortunate shot. Again, I, it would have been a long field goal, but I bet that uh, uh, Coach Shire would have tried a field goal there, uh, tried to get some additional points on the board, but, uh, you know, things like that. It just comes down to execution. They've had a few plays like that that uh, just uh, can make or break the di uh, be, the, be the difference in a game like this. Yeah, the Little Reunion team is reluctantly heading to the locker room as they were kind of hoping the officials would discuss it, but uh, not going to change anything as that takes us to halftime with the score and the Clear Creek 14, Liberty Union 7. Stay tuned. The halftime band show is coming up next. You're watching the Buffalo Wild Wings Game of the Week on IVP Sports. VP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Park National Bank, Dagger Law, the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Standing Stone Bank, Fairfield DD, North Body Shop, Personal Touch, Party Rentals, and Events. The Edwards Insurance Agency. Buckeye Toyota. The Carriage Company. Huddle Tire and Auto. The Fairfield County Commissioner's Office. South Central Power. Sheridan Funeral Home. And Buckeye Lake Marina. Fairfield Medical Center took care of me like I was family. I was made to feel like I was the only person that they were going to see that day, even though I knew that wasn't the case. Everyone at Fairfield Medical Center was very attentive. They just put my mind at ease. I was there for 12 days, and I felt comfortable there. We were people to them, not a number. They took the time to get to know us, our personalities. Yeah. Well, they saved my life. You know, how do you beat that? I don't know how I could have gotten through it without them. Experience Fairfield Medical Center. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Come experience the Huddle Tire difference. Locally owned and operated since 1910, we're your independent tire and auto repair shop. We carry all major brands of tires, including Goodyear, Cooper, BF Goodrich, and many more. But we're more than just tires. From safety inspections to alignments, brakes, shocks, and struts, even preventive maintenance, we can handle it all. Enjoy the ride at Huddle Tire Company, 300 South Columbus Street, or we can be reached at our website at huddletire.com.
The Decorative Arts Center of Ohio offers amazing tours of the historic Reese Peters House, along with art classes, exhibits, and public programs. Hi, this is Jason Crable with the Decorative Arts Center of Ohio. This month, we are very grateful to be chosen as a recipient of Buckeye Toyota's Buckeye Cares program. That means Buckeye Toyota will make a generous donation with every vehicle they sell this month. Thank you, Buckeye Toyota, for helping our community. Thank you for calling Buckeye Toyota. How may I help you? Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. Evan Green, with assistant directors Megan Banks and Allison Livingston, the 2021 Liberty Union Marching Lions! Tonight, the Marching Lions will be performing Kings and Queens, Funky Town, and Danger Zone. So give it up for the pride of LU!
Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Life is unpredictable. That's why estate planning is important. Estate planning provides you comfort and peace of mind knowing that you're taking care of your loved ones and ensuring your legacy lives on just as you envisioned. You lived a life that is beautifully and uniquely yours. You deserve an estate planning attorney who understands that and creates a plan as unique as you and in the best interest of your loved ones. You deserve the local, trusted, experienced attorneys at Dagger Law. Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the carriage company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Sweet! My name is Ernest Elton Keaton, Ernie, 11th month, 15th day of 1947. I have a very interesting life. I worked for 51 years. It just come to me what I wanted to do. Come a long way with all the pictures I took. And I enjoy doing it to make people not sad but happy. You know, and I have. I'm trying to do the best I can, be kind to people and everything. So I try my very best to do what's right and not wrong. A bit boring world if everybody did be everything. Same thing, same lights, you know. It'd be a boring world, I think. Presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Park National Bank, Dagger Law, the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Standing Stone Bank, Fairfield DD, North Body Shop, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events. The Edwards Insurance Agency, Buckeye Toyota, The Carriage Company, Huddle Tire and Auto, The Fairfield County Commissioner's Office, South Central Power, Sheridan Funeral Home, and Buckeye Lake Marina. We're on a early, I should say, late summer, early fall, uh, beautiful evening, 14-7. Amanda Clear Creek leads Liberty Union as we get ready to start the second half. Josh Messer alongside Marianne Royster. And it's been a very entertaining first half. Amanda got out to the first 14. Liberty Union scored not uh, too far before the half. And uh, looks like they found some things on offense. Yeah, uh, they uh, definitely had some things going. You saw them start to utilize those bubble screens. Uh, and the biggest factor, I think, was J getting Jacob Denny 
uh, involved in the, in the ball game there. Uh, so they were able to put together some nice drives and finish one off with a touchdown. Uh, we were talking at halftime with the, with the crew. Uh, you know, this this had the potential to, to really get ugly. Uh, so credit the Liberty Union Lions for being able to weather that early onslaught uh, from that uh, Clear Creek offense, just, again, running that, uh, you know, speed up huddle, the tempo, uh, really, you know, uh, put the pressure on them to jump out to an early 14 to nothing lead, but they hung in there. And as we talked about, I think the important thing was, you know, they didn't panic. They stayed within their game plan. They changed up some things. Uh, looked like they continued to have some difficulty running between the tackles. So, they, again, they utilized those bubble screens, was able to get some offense going, and we've got ourselves a ball game going in the second half. Yeah, the question is, can Amanda Clear Creek find that pace if they uh – had the first quarter that kind of lost a little bit in the second quarter. We'll find out here in the second half. I want to give you some out-of-town scores from other schools around the county. A big one going up, going on tonight over in Pickerington, the Battle of Pickerington, as Central leads North 7-0 in the third quarter. In the Mid-State League, it is Bloom Carroll all over Circleville, winning at home at the half, 27-0. A little bit of a surprising score at the half out of Fairfield Union. The Falcons lead Taze Valley 22-21 at the half. And also in uh, in the Mid-State League tonight, it is Fisher Catholic leading Grove City Christian 20-6 at halftime. Uh, the Millersport Trinity Christian game was postponed. And then uh, also Lancaster at home uh, trailing 14-7 against New Albany. And also at the half, it is Canal Winchester 7, Worthington Kilbourne nothing. But uh, you and I were talking about it uh, during halftime. Fairfield Union feel like a team that's really improved and uh, uh, maybe surprising Taze Valley a little bit tonight winning at halftime. Yeah, not only very improved, but also really underrated. Uh, I think uh, we were talking, Josh, the style in which they play allows them to stay in some games even when they're going against, te- against teams that might have a little bit more talent than they do. Davon Miller on the return. as That one almost went out of bounds, but he picks it up and gets out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. That's where Amanda Clear Creek will start their first drive of the second half. And you talked about it, Josh. Again, very important that Clear Creek tries to find that tempo uh, that they were able to have in, in the first half. And, again, it wasn't uh, uh, out of nowhere. The Liberty Union defense – uh, really picked it up, particularly with their defensive line in their front seven, uh, able to uh, put additional pressure um, on the quarterback and, and uh, put them in some third long situations that really helped them get off the field. And Tavon Miller has been kind of quiet tonight for the Aces. There's a handoff up the middle and nothing doing there as it was Jacob McLean in on that stop for Liberty Union. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know if this was necessarily the uh, uh, the case tonight, but you see sometimes, you know, offenses have those, the first 15 plays scripted. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, but that may have been the case tonight with Amanda and how they were able to just, you know, just uh, keep play after play after play. They knew exactly what they were doing, straight to the line of scrimmage, uh, got out to that early lead. So now, again, they have to kind of settle in, figure out what's working tonight and uh, get, get some offense going. High snap, Hunter gets it, throws, and a catch is made, and a first down reception hauled in by Cade Young. So he'll move the sticks, and what the Aces badly needed, that's a first down. And again, it's Cade Young again. Uh, you know, he, He's a, a very important weapon uh, for what the Aces are trying to do on offense. They get him the ball in a variety of different ways. Uh, line him up in a lot of different positions. A very versatile player. Uh, that time uh, just goes over the middle, runs a very nice route, uh, settles in right underneath behind the linebackers. Uh, Miller was able to, or Hunter, excuse me, Hunter was able to get him the ball, uh, make some plays. Hunter will drop back, throwing right side. There's Miller, makes the catch. Spin move, gets up field, and in to Liberty Union territory. Yeah, and I, I wonder if it was a concerted effort um, at halftime um, amongst the coaches to try to get Miller involved in this game. Again, he's such an important part of what they do. Uh, uh, we talked about him lining up in that slot position, that time running a quick, quick out into the flats, able to get open and get a, di- a couple additional extra yards. You wonder sometimes as coaches, until they look at the halftime stats, maybe don't realize when they're calling the game that, hey, we need to get so-and-so involved more. It, yeah, exactly. And like I said, especially when you've got you know, your first uh, so many plays scripted and you, you know, know exactly what's happening, and sometimes you don't realize it. And off straight ahead, and that's going to result in a first down as getting the tough yards was Hunter Matheny, who's had some 
good carries tonight for the Aces. Yeah, and talk about underutilized weapons perhaps for the Aces. I guess that's a, a good showing that they have so many different weapons. But Hunter Matheny is an incredible running back. Uh, he's had a really good season uh, uh, thus far and, and put up some nice numbers. Really, they're tough between the tackles, guy. As you see him on the replay here, uh, just jamming it up in their line of scrimmage and getting the first down. He'll get another carry here and another gain of about nine or ten. He'll pick up the first down. And perhaps the Aces have found something on the ground here to start the second half. Yeah, and again, it, they're, they're a very uh, versatile offense. They, they can come out in a lot of different sets, a lot of different formations. Uh, and and the, the strength, really, of their team, again, is their depth at the skill positions. Uh, you know, Cade Young certainly uh, had his way, made a lot of plays. Uh, in the first half, and we didn't mention much about Tavon Miller or Hunter Matheny. Uh, now we're seeing a lot of both of them here in the second half early on. And it's going to be a keeper by Hunter, and he will grind out a couple yards there. As he was wrapped up by Jacob McLean, who has been involved quite a bit tonight for the LU defense. Back to the line of scrimmage again, not much of a huddle and it looks like they're going to line up again in the shotgun formation. So again, just another offensive look. Sending a man in motion, that's Cade Young wide right. He's going to go down the sidelines and that one's way beyond the field of play. Yeah, didn't look to have much of a short rat on that. Had um, uh, looked like all four receivers running deep down the field. Probably a good decision there by Nate uh, Hunter just to not to force anything. Go ahead and chuck it out of bounds. Uh, third and six, certainly uh, most likely four down territory for the Aces anyway. Uh, so they're still in very good position to try to put points on the board on this drive. That was a case whether his guy was going to get it or nobody was going to get it. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> And that's, you know, again, we talked about in, earlier on, just the coaches trusting Hunter to make the right decisions. On third down, it's not going to be enough on the handoff as there on the carry was Tavon Miller. We trying to surprise the Aces a little bit, or excuse me, the, the Lions a little bit, giving Miller a carry to bring up fourth down. Now decision time for Coach Dalton. Yeah, and that's a play that they actually ran a few times against Jonathan Alder with a little bit of success, just that kind of quick trap in the middle. Uh, again, Miller, one of their better uh, skill players on the offensive side, uh, tried to surprise the defense. Uh, nothing doing there on that one. Uh, in fourth and four, I'm sure they wanted a, a, a more manageable fourth down on this one, but going for it nevertheless. Full house backfield. It's going to be Hunter keeping it himself, and the ball comes free. And I think the Aces jumped on it. Yes, it was. That was number 64, Jace Morrison, a sophomore offensive lineman falling on it. And you can tell he's a younger player because he doesn't have his last name on the back of his <laughs> uniform. <laughs> yeah, for, incredibly fortunate play there for the Aces. Uh, uh, and, and that's, you know, credit to Hunter uh, trying his best to try to make something happen, uh, rummaging ahead. But, uh, you know, that you know, leads to the opportunity for a potential fumble sometimes. Uh, but it worked out that time for Amanda Clear Creek. Indeed it does as they pick up the first down. Now in the red zone. And it's Matheny. And he's hit and spins away, but not for much yardage. In fact, they will give him about a yard, if that. Kind of a different look to the... Aces here in the second half. They were spread everything out for the most part in the first half. Now they go back to that, but for the most part here in the second half, we've seen full house and all kinds of power running formations. Yep, and now they're back to the five wide. <laughs> go figure in the red zone, too. Catch is made. That was Brady Sharp. Sharp picks up about seven there on second down. Bring third and manageable. Actually, maybe six on that reception. Yeah, and what an advantage it has to be to be able to morph your offense on the fly uh, like Amanda Clear Creek does back again in the five wide here. There you get a look at Nate Hunter looking over the sidelines. High snap again. Throws this one down the middle for Miller off of his hands and incomplete. Miller could have had a score there if he hauls it in. 
uh, at number 32, Brandon Shire, I think just got enough pressure on uh, Hunter to uh, uh, cause a bit of an errant throw. Again, uh, would have been a very tough catch for Miller on the other end, uh, but uh, great defensive play, forcing a fourth down. It looks like they're going to try a field goal here for Amanda Clear Creek uh, to go out to a 10-point lead. Jonathan Weaver will attempt the field goal. That'll be around the 22, so we'll say roughly a 32-yard attempt from the right hash. Hunter to hold. Kick it up. He's got a leg. And this one's good. He had room to spare on that one. That might have been good from 40, Josh. Yes. Good Lord. Keep that in the back of your mind for later in the game. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. (laughs) 17-7. Amanda Clear Creek extends the lead now with 6.18 to go in the third. Well, and, and Chu, I, I know our, our colleague Tim Shoemaker, uh, who's, who's not uh, with us tonight, but he talks almost every week. It sounds like a broken record, but it couldn't be more true. What a weapon having a kicker, a strong kicker like that, is at the high school level. Absolutely. I, I mean, because, again, you, you know, you have so many times where you get drives that, that stifle and, and fall just short. You get inside the 20-yard line, and you've come so far, but maybe forcing a fourth and long, and you have to call a play that you normally wouldn't call in kind of a desperation. And you're able to just trot, trot the kicker out there from 25, 30 yards out uh, and get three points on the board. That makes a huge difference, especially when the other team doesn't have that. I like to call it the have and have nots of high school football. It really is, game. yeah. Because really good teams, I mean, you can win a couple extra games a year having a good kicking game. And I know we saw it a few years ago. Bloom Carroll had a really good kicker as well. Absolutely. Shirky was his name. So a 10 point lead now for Amanda Clear Creek. As the Aces, not sure if they've got all 11 out there or not. or. They're taking their time, that's for sure. It's kind of an interesting uh, setup they have as Weaver will set the ball down, and then he'll go and put it on the tee once they break this huddle. Maybe one of the officials wasn't in the right place as well. That could have been part of the delay here. I want to mention it is homecoming night here at Liberty Union, and we'll mention the king and queen here in a moment after this kickoff. As Weaver will tee it up. And you see the two deep for Liberty Union. High end over end kick, and that will go into the end zone. And the other added benefit of having a strong legged kicker is your defense usually uh, is set up in good field position. Absolutely, and you don't give a chance uh, for a team that has an incredible athlete at the return spot a chance to even get out there uh, and make a play, uh, especially when you have an offense that really hasn't done a whole lot. Uh, a, a big return in the, in the kicking game can, can swing the momentum. Uh, when you have a kicker uh, with a leg like that, it just uh, really neutralizes that. So, so, so on so many levels, just just a uh, uh, just a weapon, as we always say. First and ten from the twenty-yard line for Liberty Union, and it's going to be straight ahead running. And I believe that's Schreier on the direct snap, and he won't get much going there. Mentioned it was homecoming here at Liberty Union tonight, and congratulations to the king and queen as you see him on the field prior to the game, Kristen Morris and Josh Donald, your king and queen there in the center of your screen. Congratulations, the 2021 homecoming king and queen for Liberty Union High School. And it's so nice in a homecoming weekend like this. Hopefully, knock on wood, the Lions are able to have a, a, a nice dance here, a party, and it's particularly for the seniors that they're able to enjoy their senior year uh, and do great things. This one down the sideline for Denny, and he oh. dropped it. That could have been a big play for the Lions had he been able to haul that one in. He got behind the defenders. Notice there was two aces trying to cover him. They still couldn't keep up with Jacob Denny. Yep. Yeah, and that is a, it's a tough one uh, for Denny and uh, it really any receiver. Uh, when you're that far behind the defensive back, you know you're going to score. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of just concentrating, executing, and bringing it in as we watch the replay here. He's got two yards on the defender. 
it's just, again, just a matter of just securing the catch. Uh, you know, sounds so cliche and, and kind of basic, but it is really the most important part. Uh, you know, so you, you, can, you can beat the DB, but you've got to make the play. Third and nine, he finds Denny. Denny's got some running room and a first down and more. To the 40, to midfield. Guyler will upend him just shy of the midfield strike. Yeah, and in the same breath, Josh, it, it's almost like a good shooter. You know, you miss a shot or something, you just – you got to have a short memory, almost like a quarterback. Yeah. You know, after you throw an interception, you have a short memory, memory of a goldfish, as we say. You got to forget that last play. Denny was able to do it on that one. You know, he's he's still you know a key weapon they have to have. Uh, he's going to make some more catches in this game. Made a big one on that play. And more importantly, gets a fresh set of downs for Liberty Union. A bubble screen on the near side, breaking a tackle, and going down immediately. That's number 26, Caden Courts on the reception. Nice job on the defense. That's how we're going to see on the, re on the replay here. Uh, not sure which one we're going with here. Uh, but Nate Hunter uh, able to get in uh, in the backfield, beat the block by Denny, didn't make the tackle. Uh, but, um, again, uh, freezed up the play just enough uh, to able to neutralize it. Uh, the Lions get four or five, yard five yards on the play, uh, but not a big play uh, to which the potential it had to be. Now it's going to be Brown on the keeper. He's got another first down inside the 30. Stays in bounds. Finally shoved out of bounds. Shoved out of bounds by Brady Sharp. But it'll be first and 10 Lions near the red zone. Great vision there by Brown to see the cutback lane there. I think that was a design quarterback power to the left. He puts the brakes on and scoots straight up the field and then gets in the open field. Nice stiff arm there. Able to get another five, six, eight yards before he gets pushed out of bounds. Yeah, that could almost have been a flag as he was well out of bounds before he got contacted. Just outside the red zone. Lions have a good drive going. Edie on the carry. Looked like he almost bobbled it on the handoff. We'll pick up a couple on the carry. Liberty Union has a lot of different backs that have to rotate in this ball game. We've seen Edie. Also seen Courts with the carry every now and then. And, of course, Schreier. Mm -hmm. And Schreier, a 100-yard rusher uh, just a couple weeks ago against Nelsonville York, um, has four touchdowns on the season, scored another one tonight to make five. But, uh, again, just a plethora of backs. Um, he really hasn't done a whole lot tonight. He's definitely the hammer back. Second down. Brown looking, and he'll go out of bounds. There to make the stop for the Aces was Hunter Matheny. Nice job by the Aces. Again, uh, uh, Nate Hunter looking very nice in, a, in the cornerback position as well as the quarterback position. And that one looked like it was pretty much a one-receiver route with Denny. Uh, and there's not too many uh, uh, defenders that Denny's not going to have a mismatch against. But Hunter did a great job there, kept him covered. Uh, forced, uh, uh, I'm sorry, forced Jack Brown to uh, uh, really just eat it, run out of bounds, get what he could there. And you see Jack Brown looking over the defense as the Lions break the huddle on this third and six. He's moving to his left, blitz coming, and left it short. Had to get rid of it early because he had a couple of aces, especially Cade Young chasing them down. Bring up fourth down, the Lions. Are looking like they're going to go for it. Yeah, and again, Kate Young just uh, really continues to cause havoc for the Aces on the defensive side there. Uh, getting in the backfield, you know, just incredible pursuit there um, on that play. Uh, a key fourth down uh, forces, uh, looks like to be a field goal attempt for the Lions. And this will be a long one, so uh, we'll, we'll see if they uh, uh, have an equalizer as well um, at kicker. Yeah, Storm Wolfel will be attempting a 35-yarder. And we've got a penalty against the Lions. They had 12 on the field. Wow. Oh. Or let's see, officials are talking. Maybe somebody miscounted or a timeout might have been taken. We will get the call from Larry Schreiber. He turns his mic up, and he does. Illegal substitution. Black, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. 
And that's a big penalty for Liberty Union. Uh, you never know how five yards in the high school kicking game could make a difference. A huge difference there, and we'll see. I think Storm might be a little bit more comfortable from the right hash because they're keeping him out there. And he has plenty of leg on this one, and it is good. Wow. We got a kicking duel between yes, these two. Yes, we do, schools. Josh. My word. So now with 3.28 remaining in the third, our new score is Amanda Clear Creek 17, Liberty Union 10. We still got a quarter plus to go in this one. Yeah, very nice kick there, and it, you know, it, again, it's it's just it, it's so unusual, uh, you know, to see two strong kickers facing off here as we watch the replay. He gets a running start into it, and I mean, just plenty of leg. I mean, clears a crossbar, another one that probably would have been good from 40, 45 yards. I mean, those are really college distances. I, and again, I'm in amazement. I think I've told a story on a broadcast before. My junior year, we did not have a kicker. When I say we didn't have a kicker, we did not make an extra point until the seventh week of the season against wow. Millersport. We had to go for two every time. We tried like five kickers out. None of them could make an extra point. One finally did, and again, in the seventh week of the season. You would have thought we won the Super Bowl because we made an extra point, Josh. Wow. I mean, the sideline went crazy. Everybody's jumping up and down because we made an extra point. Yeah. And you got guys out here kicking from 35, 40 yards and just sailing it through. Yeah, talk about uh, separating good teams from, from struggling teams is the kicking game. And both these two teams have good kicking games. Here's Miller on the return. He's cut down just beyond the 20-yard line. And that's where the Aces will take over first and 10 as maybe a little bit of rejuvenation on the sidelines for Liberty Union after getting that field goal to answer the Liberty Union three before. First and ten I understand that one of our crew members back in the day might have had a pretty good foot. Our top camera operator, Jim Spires, <laughs> I hear from our director, Bob Petty, was a kicker for Fisher Catholic back in the late 70s. There's Jim. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me one bit. No. I bet Jim was a great athlete. Pass is incomplete on the left side. I wanted to kick, but just could not. <laughs> <laughs> I had the top no of the ball. It just wouldn't uh, wasn't too good. Yeah, I had no desire to, and was awful at it. So, <laughs> a lot of pressure out back there. Uh, kicking oh yeah. The ball. Second and ten. As you can see, our lo broadcast location and under trouble. In trouble is. Hunter, but he gets out of it and gets back across the original line of scrimmage with a penalty marker down as well. And looking like that might be a face mask against the Lions. The officials discuss that one. This looked like the umpire initially indicated that. We'll get the call. It could really be huge for the Aces if indeed. Face mask, 27 black, five yard penalty, third down. So they call that on Caleb Riddle. Yes. And that will be, they're moving the chains. And I think if, it? excuse me, Josh, when Liberty Union looks back on this game, they're gonna see a lot of plays, a lot of mistakes that they left out here. Uh, that uh, could really make an impact on this game. Absolutely. So the penalty will result in a first down up to the 33-yard line. As Hunter will work out of the pistol. And he's going to keep it working right side, and he'll get a couple. Lions jumping on top of him. We've seen Hunter carry it a few Hunter times tonight. It was really more effective when the Lion or the Aces rather really spread the field and kind of had the Lions on their heels. Yes, yeah. But you know the important thing tonight for the Aces is no turnovers. Uh, so they've they've done a really good job of taking care of the football uh, and and you know keeping their defense off the field. And in trouble and going down is Hunter. 
The defensive line starting to get a little more active as Jacob McLean in there to, to take care of him. That's a second sack tonight for McLean, who came in again with two on the year, up to four now. Yep, and McLean's just uh, been you know, winning at the line of scrimmage consistently tonight. Uh, and, you know, sometimes with the defensive lineman, almost like uh, a skilled player or a good shooter, you know, gets in a rhythm there and goes to a couple moves that they can get by, know they can win against the offensive lineman. I think he's having a little bit of that tonight. Seems like Amanda Clear Creek's kind of gone away from the three-step drop early on. They were having success avoiding the pass rush. And that yep. catch is made for a first down in Lion territory and more. This is Young down the sidelines, and he shoved out of bounds inside the – 20-yard line. Another big play by Cade Young, uh, this time on kind of a skinny post over the middle. And again, those combination routes that the Aces have, see have uh, seemed to have a lot of success with, uh, just uh, receivers cutting off one another, confusing the uh, defensive backs there. As you see him just coming over, nice ball placement there by Hunter as well, just over the defender there, and then gives Young a chance to really make some uh, uh, moves in the open field. Get some additional yardage, fighting for every last yard before he's pushed out of bounds and uh, getting the aces in the red zone. Caden Kortz is there on coverage, almost have a chance to go after that one as well. Here's a toss sweep to Matheny. Matheny's going to be pushed out of bounds. Or near the sideline, taken down at least. Around the 15-yard line or so on the far side. And I've got to say, Josh, I've really been impressed with Nate Hunter tonight. I mean, Kate Young has played an amazing football game, but um, Hunter's been the one that's been, you know, the deliverer of uh, all those passes. Um, he's really, you know, done a uh, job with tempo, a nice job there. Uh, has also ran the ball really well. He's playing a really nice football game. Second and nine. And no nothing doing on that play as Hunter kept it. And loses a yard. As we're inside of a half minute to play in the third quarter. Key third down coming up for the Aces. And it doesn't look like the Aces will have to run another play as the play clock is just a second slower than the game clock. So they're going to take this one to the end of the quarter with a seven-point lead. And a really good ball game here at Liberty Union. Glad you've joined us. Some of you might be watching on the Interface Video Productions Facebook page or the CLN, your hometown connection, YouTube channel. Either way, thank you for joining us. You can also watch a replay of this coming up later this week on Spectrum Channel 1021 in the greater Fairfield County area. I want to say thank you to our Interphase Video Productions crew tonight. You already saw Jim Spires working our top camera tonight. Also, our other top camera is Jason Rausch. Off to our left, down the field, is Tom Russo. There's Tom shooting back up towards us in the press box. There's Jason on our other top camera. And down the truck tonight, we've got our director, Bob Campetti, and Donnie Ziegfeld on graphics. So glad that you've all uh, helped out tonight and doing a great job. And a little bit uh, smaller crew tonight, but, hey, we're getting the job done. Yeah, it's, it's uh, gone off without a hitch as it normally does, and that's because, you know, we've got so many uh, uh, key individuals. Uh, sometimes as yourself, <laughs> Josh, sometimes you, you know, you're behind the camera there and, and you're, you know, has – you know, such a great skill set you could do kind of do both there but can't say enough about our crew tonight some of the shots we've been able to have tonight uh, there's another great one there just a you know a perfect night for us to be out here watch a, a key football game and uh, it's been a good one so far sometimes you gotta be a utility player and uh, play all over the field i guess yeah you're, you're pretty good at it there well thank you you, you are as well uh, being sideline and coming up here in the booth or bleachers as it were third down and 11 for the aces Hunter on the bubble screen, catch is made and trying to get the first down, but it's going to be short of it is Trent Hedges on the reception. Looks like maybe an injured lion on the end of that play. Can't see the number. Yeah, I can't uh, either. He's still down, but uh, nice job there on the tackle. 
uh, whoever the defender there was for the Lions, uh, but it looks like he might have a cramp as well. Kind of surprising, though. It's you know wasn't extremely hot today, and it's it kind of cooled down this evening that you wouldn't think there would be much cramping this time of year. No, uh, you know, and I, I've seen players get cramps sometimes in the, you know, the 50 and 40 degree weather. It's just kind of a matter of, you know, hydration and things like that. So, uh, of course, it's obviously more common when, when the weather is really hot, but, um, you know, just something that players have to work through. Some players obviously have a harder time with it than others. Uh, and, and consistently, you know, you got the LeBron James factor for some folks yes. <laughs> that they have to work through. But uh, looks like uh, uh, the player there looks like number 26. Yeah, that is Caden Quartz as you see him come off the field there with Coach Shirey. Okay, he made a nice play on that to force a fourth down as well. Don't want to sell that short. Very nice tackle on the open field. Hey, we're going to get another field goal attempt as Jonathan Weaver is going to come out to attempt it. This one looks like it will be from about the 18-yard line, so maybe a 28-yard. Kick is up. He's got plenty of leg, and it's good. Fans here on the near side thought it went outside of the upright, but it goes through, and it's now 20-10. to 10. Amanda Clear Creek with 11.23 to go in the ball game. Yeah, it looked like it started to sail that way, but uh, uh, hung on just enough. Looked like kind of a sidewinder kick as well as we watch it here on the replay. This will be a good angle. Yeah, and you can kind of see it going again. And not an end-over-end kick, uh, but wow. Yeah, I, I can see from that angle that was a real close one. Definitely a knuckleball as it went over near, near the upright, went yeah. over and through. But and, and I'm sorry, Josh. Fortunately for Weaver, I think the fact that he was able to get so much leg on it and the fact that it was over the crossbar as opposed to being right at the crossbar, it might have been something where he might have, you know, doinked it, as they say. Right. Uh, but uh, since he sailed it over, uh, made the refer referees make a tough call there, and uh, they gave it to him there. I guess he's fortunate they don't have the extended NFL uprights. It might have doinked yeah. off to one of those. Exactly. <laughs> So a 10-point advantage now for the Aces as they kick off. And Weaver has been pretty good about putting it into the end zone tonight. We'll see if he does it again. Weaver is a six foot, 156 pound senior. He's the place kicker. Wonder if he, don't know if this for sure, but wonder if he actually plays soccer. He's got uh, two field goals tonight, so he has five on the oh. year. And this one's bobbled inside the five and scrambling to pick it up. And a almost. Uh, Disaster for the Lions on that return. Yeah, fortunate turn of events. That could have been really bad for Liberty Union uh, with a 10-point lead. Uh, you know, still a lot of time left in the third quarter, but you do not want to give the Aces offense with the momentum they have the ball uh, on the on the 15-yard line. Yeah. So fortunate they were able to fall on it uh, and start from the 15-yard line. Uh, and again, you know, they had some some issues earlier when the sun out with the sun out, and they were fortunate to to um, have that one. Uh, the earlier one in the end zone for a touchback, not so much on this one, but they still have it at the 15-yard line. A lot of time left in this one. A handoff and a gain of a few there on first down as that was Austin Eady on the carry. Eady carried the ball by Allen And Liberty Union here, uh, second and seven. Uh, again, ten point down, ten, down by ten points. Excuse me. Um, so you know, an opportunity here to just put together a nice drive, get back in this football game, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And here they are. Brown throwing deep down the middle, incomplete. Trying to find Jacob Denny, who's got two aces on him, I think, at all times at this point in the game. <laughs> I can't say that I would blame Amanda. If they put three guys on him at this point. Uh, he's made a lot of plays there and uh, has the ability there, the size, the talent, the speed uh, to really break this game open. So they're not taking any chances with him, uh, and wisely so. Well, it, it tells you the respect that the Aces have 
for Jacob Denny. They put Nate Hunter and Tavon Miller on him on that play. Probably the two best athletes or two, two of the, the better athletes on the aces. Third and seven, Brown looking downfield, and the catch is made, a sliding grab made just short of the first down marker. And that catch was made by Caleb Riddle. They'll bring up fourth and about two, and the Lions will be forced to punt. Well, good team effort there by the Aces. Uh, good good uh, pursuit there, uh, particularly by the defensive line and uh, good coverage on the backfield. You had Jacob Denny uh, running a square out, trying to get to the sticks. But again, uh, Nate Hunter uh, on the corner there, uh, just staying with him like glue and not allowing him to get open to make that catch. Wolf will be back to punt this one away. It's a nice one off. Geiler will take it at his 35, gets up to the 40-yard line, and that is where the Aces will take over first and 10. We'll take a timeout with 9.49 to go in this one, 20 to 10. It's Amanda Clear Creek leading Liberty Union. You're watching IVP Sports. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Welcome back to Liberty Union High School. And on first down, a carry by Hunter Matheny. Nets about seven yards. As the Aces take over after a Liberty Union punt, leading by 10. So a lot of time left in the game, though. As Nate Hunter will work out with the pistol. And he'll go up to the line and check over the defense, showing some looks of blitz. And some pre-snap movement, whistles and flags will stop this one before it starts. Looks like maybe a slot receiver got moving a little early. Dead ball foul. False start, number 12, White. Five yard penalty, second down. It was the guy beside you, know. That was, it was uh, Kansas Reimer there, one of the slot receivers saying, wasn't on me. Of course, receivers never have to commit penalties, right? <laughs> Definitely don't commit holds. <laughs> I didn't commit a hold in my life, I, I can uh, tell you that. <laughs> I think I earned the ones I got. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that would have been a tough one either way. As you saw, they had the all-out blitz on. Would have been tough for a man to get any kind of positivity on that one. Another high snap, this one. Errant over the middle as Miller was the intended receiver. And I think Hunter, with the blitz coming, was just lucky to get that one off, especially with the high snap. Yeah, and again, nice job by Liberty Union, just speeding Hunter up just enough uh, that he has to make an error throw. That's a tough one over the middle, really a timing pattern uh, that has to happen, especially coming off that play action uh, that they, they're really trying to find Miller you know, just at the right time. Um, so when the defense puts the pressure on like that, it makes it very difficult, difficult to complete that play. Third and seven from the 43. It's Hunter under pressure, and he will go down. And it looks like maybe a late flag thrown in. And yeah, a penalty flag on the far side. Let's see what that's about. Riddle in on the tackle. As we get another look at the last play. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 27 black, 15 yard penalty, results in a first down. That's Riddle who had the sack, gets called for the face mask. That's a killer penalty for yeah, the jo Lions. Josh, just like we said, those are just backbreaker plays. I mean, those are plays that you can't have, and unfortunately for Liberty Union, they've had a ton of them tonight uh, that have just either killed their own drives or kept the man to drives going. I want to remember that play if the Aces put more points on the board. 
It's a handoff up the middle. And that was Matheny for a gain of a couple. And just to harken back to the previous point, it, it, it's just an execution type thing. Uh, you know, when you have a, a team that uh, Liberty Union, uh, were a it's a tough game like this, everything matters. And when you don't execute, when you have drop passes, when you have backbreaker penalties like that, when you have, you know, just constant mistakes, it is very, very tough. Just puts you in a, a much tougher position to beat a good team like the Aces. And it adds up, of course, too. Yeah. Second and six. Another high snap. That's been a problem tonight. And getting wrapped up right away is Hunter. Hunter, the ball carrier, brought down by Myers. Myers there on the stop. Lost on the play, brings up third down, eight. And yeah. it's another key third down. And Hunter, you know, he's he's a tough kid. Uh, he's he's taken you know quite a bit of hits tonight. Uh, you know, has been you know running between the tackles, just jams it up in there. Uh, really runs hard. Um, has handled a, a, a more than a few very difficult snaps. And again, the most important thing has not turned the football over tonight, uh, which has really uh, been you know the key. You know, again, so many uh, mistakes on the Liberty Union side, not a whole lot on the Aces side. Hunter steps up, and he will get wrapped up and dropped at the 40-yard line. Schreier, also with a little bit of help from Barrett Young, will prevent Hunter from picking up that first down. We'll see what the Aces decide as Hunter looks over to the sideline. And might see the quick kick, too. They pulled that out earlier tonight. Yep. Yep, could be either one here, or they could just go for it. Again, it's, uh, you, you trust Miller to make the right decision in situations like this, or a hard count. And fourth and five, an uh, encroachment penalty could give the Aces a first down. Yep. Deeper drop than normal. This may be a quick kick. There you go. And oh, and blocked. it's blocked. And it's a free ball, and it's recovered by the Lions. And it's Slade McClaskey who recovered it. Couldn't quite tell who got the block. Kind of like most of the offensive line got shoved back. And yeah. we'll get another look. Might have been a couple there as we watch the replay here. Uh, well, it looks like somebody comes just straight through. Uh, hard to see who that was. It came off the defensive right side. Yes. Crucial play there for the Lions. And we talked about it earlier in this game. You know, that that's the risk you run with the quick kick because you don't have your normal protection, obviously, as you would on a normal punt. And all it takes is for one defender to get free, and then you've got a block on your hands. See if the Lions take advantage. Brown under pressure. He will get to the sideline and taken out of bounds, just shy of the 40-yard line near the line of scrimmage. Running them down was a few aces. And, and those are the ones where Brown, again, not, not really you know, hurt on that one, but those are ones where you like to see him throw it away. And I think, again, that's maybe more of an experience type of thing. You know, he's used to probably trying to find the receiver and make a play with his legs. He certainly has the ability to do that, but sometimes it's okay to just throw the ball away and fight another day. Not to mention you lose some time. This one thrown and nearly intercepted as a couple of aces had a chance at it. Geiler got a piece of it. Cade Young was the closest, or rather it was 34, Peyton Castley. Yeah, and he was trying to go for Eddie Henderley on that one. Henderley, another big receiver, runs 6-4, but uh, uh, one that they haven't been able to get the ball to uh, much tonight. Um, but uh, fortunately for Brown on that one, the pass wasn't picked off. Uh, certainly had the uh, uh, potential to be so. Third and 10 from the 39, a screen. Denny's got it, and some running room to midfield. He gets a block and a flag thrown. Ball comes free, and the Aces have it. So the Aces come away with a big turnover. Flag likely going to go against Liberty Union for a block as the officials sort this one out. Blindside block, number 15, Black. It's a 15 yard penalty, repeat third down. Called that one on 15 black, it was probably 26 black, Caden Courts, and 
Uh, I'm glad I held my tongue, Josh. I was going to say an excellent block there by Quartz, but uh, it's, it's a different game these days uh, yeah. than when you and I played. Uh, 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and, and those type of blocks you're going to get called for, uh, regardless if your your head's in front or not. Blind side block, black, declined. First down. I think the official didn't realize that the ball came free and was recovered by the Aces, so yeah. the penalty's really a moot point at the, right now, and you know, the Aces will have it first and 10 with a little over five minutes to go, leading by 10. Yep, and again, unfortunately for the, the Lions there, just an, another mistake. Uh, uh, that one was uh, pulled out, but it's just something ball security is just yeah. paramount, especially in a game like this where it's close uh, uh, down the stretch. Uh, every little bit uh, matters uh, when you have drop passes, when you have turnovers, when you have uh, penalties and, and uh, uh, personal fouls. It, it, they're just, you just can't recover. Hunter in trouble, and he will go down. And there was McLean. Also got a little help from Troy Myers. I'll tell you, the pass rush in the second half has been much improved for the Lions. Yeah, really pretty much since the start of the second half. And look, uh, 40, Myers just wins on a spin move just immediately. I mean, I mean, what a move off the line of scrimmage there. Uh, jumps the snap count perfectly. Uh, Amanda Clicker might want to think about going back to a cadence to keep those uh, uh, the defenders off balance, but just a great swim move, gets in the backfield, gets a little help from McLean as well, uh, and gets a big sack there. Hunter throwing over the middle, catch is made by Miller, and he goes down rather quickly as Jacob Denny making the tackle on defense with a little help from Troy Myers, so back-to-back -back plays for Myers. All right, but that's the right call there for Amanda. Uh, you know, they are in a, a soft a cloud coverage. Uh, take advantage of what you can get now. Get it back to a third and ten so you're not looking at third and extra long. Uh, hope that uh, Hunter can make a play on this one. Third and ten from the 45. So the Aces will spread it out. Hunter has the pocket breakdown, escapes. But another defender coming in and cleaning it up as Barrett Young there to keep Nate Hunter from picking up more yardage. And he'll bring up fourth down. So other than lost time, the turnover doesn't hurt the Lions. Yeah, uh, now time is crucial at this time, you know, with uh, just a little over uh, three minutes remaining. I mean, this second half is really flying by, but uh, again, uh, just an amazing job there by the defense, not allowing Amanda to take advantage of that crucial back-breaking turnover uh, that the Lions just had on offense. Weaver on the year is averaging 39.2. We'll punt this one away with Denny waiting his own 20. A little rugby-style kick, trying to kick it away from Denny, and he does, nicely done. It'll roll out of bounds around the 25-yard line, so that's where the Lions will take over first and 10 with 2.49 to go in this one. Give you some scores from other games. Pickerington Central leading Pickerington North 10 to 9 in the fourth quarter. That sounds like a good one. Tough night for Lancaster. They are losing in the fourth quarter at home, 34-14 to New Albany. Bloom Carroll shutting out Circleville in the fourth, 46 to nothing. It is Fisher Catholic 41-20 over Grove City Christian. That's in the third. And Taze Valley has... Stormed back to lead Fairfield Union 42 to 22 Whoa. in the fourth quarter. That uh, turned around quickly. Sure did. A few yards gained there on first down. Fantastic open field play there by Grant Geiler. He's had a nice good tackle. night tonight. Yes, he has. He's made a lot of plays, particularly on defense. Good look there at Jack Brown. Second down and seven. Brown looking for Denny near the sideline. He almost comes down with it in the double coverage. And Denny yet nearly made the catch. And as much as we've called Hunter's name on offense, uh, he, he's he's played equally, if not better, on defense. Uh, and, and this is not a bad ball here by Brown, particularly with Denny and his height advantage. And it's just a, a better play by uh, by uh, excuse me by Nate Hunter. 
and he's able to get uh, vertical uh, with a guy that's got probably four or five inches on him uh, and still make a play, get in there, uh, and force the third down. Third and seven. Brown weaving through the defense. Got a long way to go to get a first down. He gets out of bounds and gets as much as he could. Out near the 35-yard line, but he's still going to be about four yards short. Yeah, obviously in four-down territory, but the best part of that play is he, at least he was able to get out of bounds. Stops the clock there. That you know the clock is is uh, just as important uh, as, as anything right now uh, for Liberty Union. LU has all three timeouts. Bubble screen, catch is made, and a first down picked up by Camden Manson. Haven't called his name for a while for the Lions, but he gets a crucial first down to stop the clock temporarily with 2.08 to go. Yeah, and I think it was the perfect time to go back to that play. Great call there by Coach Shirey, uh, getting the bubble screen out there, uh, trusting, trusting Manson there to make a play. And not only does he get the first down, but gets out of bounds. Brown gets rid of this one immediately as he takes a hit. He got it hammered by Cade Young, who was coming hard from the left side. Yep. Amanda, very fortunate not to get a roughing the passer call on that one. I certainly uh, heard some of the Liberty Union fans uh, arguing their case for such. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, second down. Um, and again, if you're the Lions here, you've got to think about getting some chunk plays because it's not enough to score once. You've got to, you know, get an onside kick and score again. Brown drops back, loads up, throws it in the, near the sideline, and the catch is made. That's Jacob Denny. If you're throwing it up for grabs, you want 15 underneath of it. Right, but he was short of the stick, so they've got to hustle up. There's not even a stoppage to move the sticks on that one. Block moving, nearing 90 seconds to play. They've got to get to the line quicker. Got a lot of time wasted right now. Brown in trouble, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, trying to connect with Caleb Riddle, who went out at first down into Ace's territory. We'll watch here on the replay. Great spot here by Brown. Nice sidearm throw there just to get it in there. Mm. And Riddle's just not able to come in with that catch. Again, just, you know, just too many drop passes, too many unforced errors for the Lions. Just puts himself in very difficult positions. Fourth down and three, and that one thrown too far for the intended receiver, Camden Manson. Would have had a first down as he was able to haul it in, but just thrown a little too far for him. And with a minute 19 to go, down two scores. That's probably going to be about it for the Lions, unless Amanda Clear Creek helps them out. Yep. So often just a timing play on those bubble screens, and unfortunately they just weren't able to, to get that one. Take time here in a moment after this play to name our players of the game. And Marion, you've got the Herculean task of uh, naming those. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we've got uh, quite a, a few uh, contenders for that, so it should be a fun one. <laughs> after this play, we'll name our Amanda Clear Creek player of the game. And here's a handoff up the middle for a few yards there. Tonight's Amanda Clear Creek player of the game brought to you by Park National Bank. Park National is a family of community banking teams delivering an exceptional breadth and depth of resources to individuals and businesses, providing a hands-on, personalized approach to service and strong leadership. Invest deeply in the places we live and work. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And as you said, Josh, uh, uh, quite a few uh, suspects on the uh, Aces side of the ball. Nate Hunter's had an amazing game. Uh, Jonathan Weaver as well, uh, just a weapon in the kicking game. Uh, also, Cade Young, uh, who has, has made some humongous plays uh, on offense and also been in the backfield on defense. Uh, but I think I'm going to give it tonight to Nate Hunter. Uh, he, he's done a, a fantastic job from the quarterback spot. Again, really managed the game. Uh, you know, the, the, the tempo made it look easy the first couple drives of the game, but it's really not. Uh, converted on a couple long touchdown passes. Um, and again, it may be even just, just as effective uh, on the defensive side 
uh, from his cornerback spot, uh, really uh, doing a great job on Jacob Denny tonight, keeping him from making too many big plays. There you see the senior leader getting a carry and diving towards the first down marker, and he's going to be a little bit short. Bringing up third and short. Timeout taken by Liberty Union. They've got one remaining. Our Liberty Union player of the game is brought to you by the Edwards Insurance Agency, specializing in providing personalized insurance coverage that meets the needs of our individual clients. Contact Todd or Dale Edwards today. Yeah, and again, a, a, a lot of mistakes made by Liberty Union, but also a lot of good plays, a lot of positivities to build off of. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, good plays made in tonight's game. Uh, but I think the player of the game, uh, the players of the game, uh, largely uh, led by that uh, defensive line effort. And I think the standout amongst that group was Jacob McLean, um, the uh, six foot, 230 pound senior, uh, was in the backfield really all night, had several quarterback hurries, a couple sacks, key sacks in crucial moments, uh, did a fantastic job, allowed Liberty Union to get back in this football game and did a really nice job. Yeah, he was a force we see him right there in the middle of your screen on that defensive line. Congratulations to him as our Liberty Union player of the game. Third and one for the Aces upcoming. And they can pretty much kneel it out if they pick this, this third down. Hunter's going to sneak it straight ahead. He's got the first down. See if the Lions will take a timeout. And we'll take this opportunity to thank Standing Stone Bank. Whether you're ready to tackle a mortgage loan or need cash for home improvements, make Standing Stone Bank the key player in your home and business financial plans. Business to business, neighbor to neighbor. Let's grow this town together. Standing Stone Bank, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Also, we'll thank our second half scoreboard sponsor here in a moment. We'll have one more play. Actually, while we're waiting on that, our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Buckeye Lake Marina. If you're looking for a new boat, great pre-owned watercraft or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. And we'll take one last opportunity to thank Buffalo Wild, Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. So uh, Neil Down will put this one to bed as the Amanda Clare Greek Aces come on the road and get a big 20 to 10 win over in-county rival Liberty Union. And uh, Marion, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about next week, but when you consider the, the, the how tight this Mid-State League Buckeye race is going to be, you can go on the road and get a win like this tonight. That's uh, going to pay some dividends down the road. Yeah, and Amanda's got to be really happy with this one. Again, they uh, uh, played very well tonight, able to get a, a key league win, uh, improving their record to 3-1, and one, uh, able to keep pace with Bloom Carroll, who they'll face off with uh, against in a couple weeks. Uh, but not until they, they take on a, a uh, or I'm sorry, they'll play uh, Bloom Carroll next week, actually. It's uh, Liberty Union that will play uh, Bloom Carroll in a couple weeks. But, uh, again, uh, just so crucial, again, you can't really take a week off. Uh, they came out ready to play, uh, certainly jumped out to that early, which we said was going to be crucial for them to be able to do. Uh, had Liberty Union on, the, on their heels for the remainder of the game. Uh, they were able to get back in the game, but uh, man, it just uh, made enough plays uh, to finish it out. Uh, particularly strong in the kicking game, and they were able to get the win tonight. Yeah, indeed. And for Liberty Union, a, a team that, you know, you lose your starting quarterback week one, you're still trying to recover from that. They found some things, I think, to build on tonight. And, you know, yes, it, it's it's tough that you lose a game like this uh, in, in the conference, but by no means are they out of anything. It's still way early in the conference race. But, you know, certainly mistakes, as you mentioned earlier, when they look back at this game, they're going to see mistakes that they, they wish they could have corrected. Yeah, a ton of them. And they're going to say we had every opportunity uh, to be in this game and really win this game uh, had we not had so many, um, you know, errors where we really just shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, and they could have been right there in this game, potentially even won this game. But the other thing about, you know, such a tough league, uh, yes, it's a tough game for you, uh, you know, pretty much every week you're facing off against a quality opponent. 
but you, you, you expect that those opponents are potentially going to beat up on one another also. Yeah. Uh, so while you know they may have stubbed their toe tonight against Amanda Clear Creek falling to 2-2, two and two, uh, there's certainly a potential that Amanda Clear Creek could drop a couple uh, games here coming up because they're going to have some tough matchups uh, with Taze Valley, with Bloom Carroll. And Bloom Carroll's going to have some tough ones as well. We saw that Taze Valley uh, for a while had their hands full with Fairfield Union. Yeah. So anything can really happen. Um, in this Mid-State League Buckeye Conference. Uh, so, you know, Liberty Union just has to clean up a lot of these mistakes uh, and, j and just continue to fight, and they can get right back in this league. Sets up a good matchup for us next week. Uh, we're going to call it maybe the Mid-State League Buckeye Game of the Week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going to the pit. It will be Bloom Carroll at Amanda Clear Creek next week. A big matchup. You'll see that here on IVP Sports as well. So, And then the following week we'll have the – the uh, Lions and the, the Bulldogs, so as you said, uh, just the teams beating up on each other. We're going to see a lot of those games here in the coming weeks. Yeah, almost a, a round-robin tournament, if you will, to see who's the last man standing, the last team standing uh, in the Mid-State League Buckeye. But it'll be our first look at Bloom Carroll. They've got an excellent team once again. Uh, they've had several good teams uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, finishing with nine wins, uh, making a deep run in the playoffs. Uh, Coach Wade Bartholomew always has a, you know, a, a very – um, uh, explosive offensive attack. Uh, I don't expect anything to be different this year. Uh, so Amanda's going to have their hands full. But based on what we saw tonight, I think that this offense can keep pace with uh, any offense in this league, including Boone Carroll's. Uh, so we should have a really good one next week. I'm it excited should for be, it. Yeah, it should be a good one. And, uh, again, this one was a good one tonight as well. Excited. Uh, glad to be back with you. And uh, we'll look forward to it for next week. Always. B team got it done tonight. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 20 to 10, the final score. Man, the Clear Creek comes on the road and gets the win over Liberty Union. For Marion Royster and our entire IVP Sports crew, I'm Josh Messerly. Thanks for watching the Buffalo Wild Wings Game of the Week. So long, everybody. Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Park National Bank, Dagger Law, the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Standing Stone Bank, Fairfield DD, North Body Shop, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Buckeye Toyota, The Carriage Company, Huddle Tire and Auto, The Fairfield County Commissioner's Office, South Central Power, Sheridan Funeral Home, and Buckeye Lake Marina.